What's going on? How y'all doing today, man? How y'all do? Well, my day yesterday was. So. <laughs> my day was cool. I mean, I got a uh, new couch today. It's mad comfortable. I mean, can't complain about and, that. Uh, streamed a little bit. I mean, so we chilling, bro. You feel me? All right, I feel it. And um, just for anyone who isn't aware, uh, so to, I was I was laughing. You know, why I was laughing at this because Pat, because at some point I was supposed to get to the movies. I want to do this for the movies at some point too. I should be way further. <laughs> should be done with that with the manga portion of this because there's, there's been enough breaks that we should be done this part but it, 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 is, what it, is. it is what it is but um when was the last time we did this like november last year october 2020 last year <laughs> <laughs> for water seven bro like well you know what it was too i'm like i feel like no one's gonna want to do Tillabark. they don't care about the bark like that you know so a little something like eeny, meeny, rap from the beginning. Smoke a little pack, but the pack never timid. Church, but I'm seeing it. Curse when I'm winning. She need a new back when it's back, I'm a bend it. Slap up some guinea, pass me the hen it. Watch a nigga black, so react, I'm a quit it. Swerve in the benzy, perfume is Fendi. Bob and move fast, real fast like I'm Ricky. This is from pretty, came from the dirt. Show up a nigga, can't handle the work. Ooh, y'all, swing with it first. You don't like girl like a real So, yeah, just for anyone who doesn't know who's unaware, so ranking the One Piece uh, series is basically what I do is. I'm supposed to do is every week that One Piece has a break, I'm supposed to basically take a saga. So the East Blue Saga, we go through each arc. So you know, from Log Town to blah blah blah, Orange to Orange Village, Orange Syrup Village, Orange Town, yada yada. Thank you for the follow. Um, we're supposed to go through all the arcs. We basically talk about it. We give each arc a rating. I take the average of everyone's number. So if everyone give it a seven. Obviously, it's a seven, and then we do it for pretty much each arc, and then we give the saga an overall rating. Um, and then what I want to do at the very end is based on what we've done, I want to give one piece an overall a number based on all the streams we did. So that is that that is exactly what's going on. They said why they say why are you always lean the VOD? <laughs> so glad I like ask you. But um all right. Actually the first thing I want to start with, ask you guys um before I even get into anything specific is kind of not it's kinda of, it's kinda of unrelated to the art currently. We just hopped in. Who's that? Who did it? It was Alan. Oh, there we He's go. here. Mr. Petrie. Okay, we are here. What's going on, sir? Just chilling, man. How y'all doing? I'm all right. I can't complain, you know? Always oh, say copyright. There you go. Got your answer. Okay, so what I want to ask you guys is this. When you when you initially heard that Kaido and Gekko and Moria were rivals at some point, Based on the story that you'd originally heard, I don't necessarily remember if we heard this in Thriller Bark at first. I'm not. I'm, I. I just want to know this because, because as an aside, because I always find this inter this conversation interesting. What did you? How did you guys take that initially like when you first heard it? And how do you feel about that now, having seen obviously the full display of Kaido and well, not full display, but a display of Kaido and what Nekomaria can do? Is it cap? Like, what do you guys think? And, uh, so now what did they exactly say, like verbatim about their relationship? Because I don't remember. They basically, they basically had said that they were rivals, but when, uh -huh. when, they, when they had met, Kaido is actually the one who destroyed his entire crew, which is why he said, fuck it, zombies. He mm -hmm. ran back to, oh, to Paradise yeah, yeah, okay. and said, zombies right. away. So, um, I think them being rivals for me was, was surprising. I didn't expect, uh, Gekko Moria out of any, out of, out of, out of everyone, you know what I mean? Like, that was kind of shocking for me. However, Kaido destroying his crew made sense to me power wise at the time. Like I was like, okay, that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. it is Kaido, even though it was a younger Kaido, it's still Kaido. Like, so the power difference didn't really like bother me. Like it kind of made sense to me. Um, cause, uh, Gekko Moria, like I'm not saying Gekko Moria is super weak or anything, but he, he never came off super threatening as far as the other warlords. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and you look at other ones, you look at Mihawk, Dolphy, Boa, like people like that. It's kind of like, then you look at Gekko Moria, it's just like, and that might have just been because Luffy kind of, uh, Luffy, you know, with the help of uh, the shadows and stuff, they defeated Gekko Moria early on. So it might have just been one of those situations where it's like, oh, he lost early. So, you know what I mean? So I might be a little biased there, but. Um, I don't I remember. Think, 
I think for me, just like just to finish my thought, I think for me the most shocking thing was that it was Gecko Moria. Like, mm -hmm. I just didn't expect that to be Kaido's rival. You know what I mean? Like, so that's okay. that's just my thought on it. Okay. What what did, what did you say? What did you say? Alan, what, what didn't you remember? Oh no, I was just gonna say that I think that uh, the one of the reasons why Gecko Moria doesn't come off as like as threatening is also because I I don't remember like if it was before he fought Kaido or afterwards, but uh. He he also just got real lazy and just stopped fight, you know just stopped doing anything. So that's why by the time yeah, Jimbe mentioned that I out. think in Marine Ford, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. like he just stopped trying as, as hard. Also, so that's why by the time Luffy comes around, he's not he's not the same. He's not on the on the same level as he once was, along with him losing the title. Okay. What do you think? What do you think about that? Uh, that kind of like uh, comment Jimbe made. Do you think that it was a uh, the defeat for Gecko Moria was just kind of like a demoralizing thing? Like, do you think Kaido, like, not only defeated him physically, but kind of, like, the defeat was, like, mentally taxing on him to the point where it's just, like, he yeah, kind of was I think just... it was. Yes. He, he, they say they killed this whole crew, and you know, that's why he started going with the zombies, too. Yeah. I would argue if your spirit isn't crushed, you wouldn't run back to paradise. It's the same reason why yeah. I say a lot of people, as raw as Crocodile is, Crocodile's a self a self-actualized loser. He understands that he's a silver medalist and he ran back to paradise to try to find some scheme and machination on Alabasta with Pluton and a, and a, and a nation that, where it doesn't rain, but it's a desert nation that doesn't rain, to amass a certain amount of power. I think running back to paradise is a huge sad indication that you're kind of like, you're not built for this. And now you need some weird yeah. scheme, like I need zombies to, to become Pirate King. Uh, he did mm. still want to become Pirate King though, so I guess I'll give him that. What do you think, Pat? I feel like um, it was like since that earlier, like it's kind of one of those things where Luffy defeats somebody early, so they think he's weak. But when you look back on it, like you have to take into account it was like a lot of circumstances, like it was all the shadows that he took in, and yeah. even then, uh, he still yeah, didn't yeah, defeat him completely. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, uh, they had to fight him together as a crew to take him out. Yeah. Even after the whole Nightmare Luffy thing. Yeah. But, you know, when Moria was chilling on Thriller Park and Luffy showed up, you know, he's resting with his head in between his hands, talking about some little ass nigga from the East Blue rookie 300 million bounty. They're like, this shit don't bother me. <laughs> Hell, I had a... <laughs> he's just yeah. in there. Yo, it's the same thing with Oars, too, bro. These zombie Oars is kind of built different, too, if you look at what it took to beat him. Like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. And they barely still beat them. You feel me? Like, but they go Oars really out here too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Oars, Oars was a problem. And he was he's huge. Like he's big, huge. Yeah. So So kind of the reason why I asked you guys that was because you see for me, when when people when people and talk about one piece of when it comes to rivalries, right? I don't always take it the literal face value that some people would. I think I I would surmise that most people haven't heard that Kaido and Gekamori were rivals, I think they thought that they probably were constantly fighting one another. I would argue that they were probably on the rise at the same time. So anytime Kaido did something crazy, Moria somewhere else in the Grand Line probably did something equally as crazy or just a little bit less crazy. So they're being mm -hmm. so, so in the in the media they're competing. Which is why they're being strung together as rivals. I don't actually think they had a rivalry to that to that degree because when they fought Amano what happened to, to Things Crew? Wiped out. You feel me? So, it's the same way I feel about Kid in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think Kid and Luffy are rivals, but not in the sense where it's like L Luffy and Kid are constantly being pit against each other. It's the fact that they're both part of the worst generation, or supernovas, if you will, that and that they're both doing crazy stuff in the news, in the newspaper, that they keep... They keep doing, oh, Luffy did this in his lobby. Well, he just destroyed this all this civilian property. Oh, are they competing? It's like that. That's how I. That's how I took it. Now in yeah, now in the grand scheme, to... having seen Kaido, it's like yeah, no, this was not a rivalry, bro. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always look at I always look at Kid and Luffy's thing as more of like a. It's kind of like they they have just a common goal, and they're, it, and on top of that, it's like, their, their paths cross often. Especially now in this in this yeah. big arc, so I kind of think it might be one of those situations where it's like, 
he doesn't rival Kaido in strength, but it was like a rival in the in the sense of like you said, they were just always going head to head at each other type thing. Like, yeah, that's how I always took. It. That's why I want to ask yeah. the question. But okay, let's actually talk about Thriller Bark. Thriller Bark. Thriller Bark is the is the Thriller Bark saga always makes me laugh because it's the only saga with literally one arc. It's not even that long. You would think maybe. Like, Address Rosa kind of makes more sense because it's so long and stuff like that. But, anyways. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Allen. I want you to just literally just start off somewhere. We can mention a character, a fight, something you did or didn't like about the arc. Whatever. Start off somewhere. We'll go from there. What you got? Uh, Alright, so. Uh, before I do start, I always tell you. So, I actually, the reason why I had to go ahead and reread through LeBarc is because I think I told y'all before, but. This is like only my third time actually uh, going through this arc mm -hmm. because the first, like my first time going through One Piece, my cousin told me to skip uh, Water Seven and Thriller Bark told me that they didn't matter. Water so, uh, Seven? <laughs> no, not, not Water Seven. My, I'm sorry, not Water Seven. No, Skypea, Skypea. Yeah, that's still, Skypea. that's still blasphemous. But that's still blasphemous for real. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, that, that I've heard before. <laughs> yeah, at, at least, yeah, at least I've heard nigga say that though. Well, you said Water I've 7, never, I almost lost it. I said, I've no, never no, heard no. a nigga say skip Water, water 7. Oh, I've man. never heard that. God right, damn. I ain't gonna lie, that scared me when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he told me to skip Skypea and throw the bark. And like, so I, I did because I, I thought they, uh, they didn't matter. So I had to go back a few times and actually reread those arcs. So it's, uh, Thriller Bark especially, it wasn't too fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went back and read it. But uh, the, that aside, my favorite parts of the arc, I'd say, are... I, I really like when Chopper gets mad at like fake doctors. Okay. And, uh, he oh, yeah, that, that, that was hard. Him. And like, so his, his anger towards Dr. Ho uh, Hogback, uh, uh, you know, just. Fuss, 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 fuss. <laughs> and then the other thing is uh, just, you know, Brooks promise to Laboon and just his uh, conviction to, to try to keep that promise alive and mm -hmm. uh, finish it. Actually, on that, how did you guys initially feel about Brook when he was introduced? Like I will, oh. I will openly admit that Brooke had to grow on me. I didn't like him. I didn't. I, I can't say that. I didn't dislike the character Brooke. I didn't care for him as a straw hat. Does that make sense? Initially, he yeah, grew on sense. me over time. Yeah. He grew on me over time. Cause I, to me, I was like, I thought about it this way. I'm like, we have a better swordsman. We got Zoro, right? So we don't need you. At the time, he couldn't swim for no reason. We knew he couldn't die, but he couldn't use his ability in any other way, in, in, in any other significant manner. So that bothered me. And like, okay, you a magician, fair enough, and you a good one at that. But you know, Frankie be out here, you know what I'm saying, playing music. I don't know. He could, he could, he could, he could get a soundboard. They got a robot. You can make some some shit, <laughs> some synth shit. Like I, <laughs> that was, I was lie to you. That's what I was thinking. Like I don't like this guy like that. What? How do you feel? How do you feel about him initially, though, bro? Oh. Oh, I'll go first. So, I'll say this. Of, like, the latter Straw Hats that joined after East Blue, I actually liked Brooke immediately. Like, as soon as we saw him. So because... You, you said, do you poop? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it, the no way it was... The setup to the introduction was just so funny to me. Because they saw the ship, and then they tried to go on the ship, and with luffy luffy like why are you guys coming with me i can do this by myself it's not like because you're stupid so we have to go we have to make sure you don't do nothing dumb he goes over there you see brooke i'm like bro is that a talking skeleton and he walk and everything and luffy talk about some you're interesting join my crew and brooke like yeah and i'm like wait what they say this ship zoro like why we even send you to if you're gonna bring back something like this you sit he eat it, he burp, and then he farted and say, excuse me, I was dying. <laughs> it was just too funny, bro. I was like, now nah, he has to join. Oh, man, that's, that's funny. The, the, the skull jokes thing, I, I, I was laughing. Though. I, as I said, I didn't dislike him. I just didn't want him as a, um, <laughs> as a straw hat at the time. But uh, what's your guys' opinion on Carrot? What do you guys think about Carrot? Just, just, just real quick. Carrot? Ah, oh, man. Send her ass back to the fucking... What did Paris Sparrow say? That's how I feel. Talk about the, <laughs> about Parrot the, the rabbit, nigga? What, Parrot? Yeah. yeah. Nigga, fuck Parrot, nigga. <laughs> what? what did Parrot bro say? Go eat some grass? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Like, come on, bro. There are, there, are, there are so many better minks than Carrot. Like, what are we talking about? I'm saying she gotta go back to Zoe, man. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. tired of it. Especially now. Like at one point, I was kind of okay with it, but now I'm like, nah, I don't need that. 
But um, yeah, uh, Sin, how do you feel about Brooke initially? Uh, Brooke, when I first uh, Pete Brooke, I was like. Yeah, funny nigga, for real. And then, like, <laughs> he was cool. Like, he was a funny nigga, you feel me? Like, I was fucking with him. And then, like, got the uh, the whole, like, his crew backstory, the Laboon shit. I was like, damn, man, I'm kind of fucking with this nigga a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. And then by mm -hmm. the end of Thriller Bark, I was like, all right, he, he, he can join the crew, for real. I'm fucking with him. Like, But it, it did take, it took me a little bit. I'm kind of with you, Naya, as far as the straw hat. It took me a little bit. But by the end of Thriller Bark, I was like, all right, I fu I'm fucking with him. Okay, okay. And, and um, Alan, I know this was you. Were, you started us off, but I don't think I got your your take on Brooke initially. How did you feel about it? Uh, I, I liked him just because uh, you know, just Luffy want, immediately asking him to join the crew, and him him immediately saying yes. I like I liked him. I liked the jokes. I also like the fact that he was, funny. Like, was one of the uh, like a musician was one of the positions that Luffy wanted from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing you said he needed, I think, <laughs> like a cook or a musician. Yeah, right? I, I, I didn't even think he was. Serious. Serious about that, but now he was dead ass. He was like, "We need a magician, uh, musician." I'm like, "Bro, he's still on that." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I like Brook. I like him. Okay. How well? How, how do you you guys like him a lot more now, though? Like for me, I would say yeah. by the time I don't know, I don't know what that is. I heard something, but thank you. Someone gifted. Okay, thank you for the gifts. The gifted sub, but um. What I was gonna say is like I was I would say by the time the the time skip came around, it's been it was that long. <laughs> time skip came around, and he came back as the soul came. Well, I'm fine with him. He's, he's cool. I'll just I'll just over it. And there was no real reason. I was like, nah, he's fine, man. Shout out to Brooke. Soul King out, man. Whole Cake Island made me like him like a lot more. Yes. Well, Whole Cake, he's kind of my MVP. I'm like, I mean, end of the yeah, day, what's the assignment? To get the One Piece. What do you need for that? The rubbings of the. Honey okay, what did he get? The that nigga dumped a thirty Honey point Honey. triple double. I don't care what anyone tells me. He said, that "Man, Brooks said we came here to get Sanji back, but even if we don't get him back, we want to we want to leave with something so he don't feel bad." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh yeah, this nigga talking." Yeah, and he called her a young lady. I said, "Yeah, yeah, flex on her." <laughs> she she a boomer. I mean, you're a boom, you're a baby boomer. She she a uh, Generation X. Let her know about herself. <laughs> Okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'll, I'll go next. I'll start with something that I really enjoyed about the arc. Because I will say this. Thriller Bark is probably the arc that I would say that most people that I talk to generally, it's not even like this. It just, they're like, meh. I think it's a little underrated. I still think the kind of, the arc that I have to defend the most is still the long, <coughs> long arc. Like, like the daily back flight. I defend that arc. I put my cape on. I should be flowing in the wind when people hate on that arc. But this is another arc that I, I think a lot of people don't really like. like Aya, what's your least favorite arc in One Piece? Dressrosa. Just Rosa? Yeah. I think it's the most disorganized arc, and I think it was inefficient, and I ran too long. Yeah, I, I, I was talking to him about it. I, like, it was, it was long have, as shit. Did you, uh, I don't know how you, did you, cons how did you consume Dress Rosa? Did you weekly or did you binge? Yeah, I've been caught to One Piece for like 17 years. Uh, <laughs> see, see I, that's why I was going to say, my opinion of Dress Rosa is so different than yours, and I think it's because I didn't have to sit through it week by week. I just, I just sped through it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't Bro. really get the I didn't get really get the feel, but uh, recently I went back and I've uh, looked at Dressrosa again, like just to to see like other people's opinions. Like I I went back and like looked at it uh, more in depth, and I definitely can see what you what you mean when you say it's disorganized. Like there there's a lot of like there's a lot of tomfoolery going on with the structure of that arc. Yeah, like it's, it's a lot of peaks, but. It takes a while to get. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, I, like I think, like I, I couldn't explain it really. I like I've spoken about it ad, ad nauseum, so I couldn't explain it really well. Like I, I always say this. Like I don't, I don't dislike any One Piece arc. So when I say it's my least favorite, it just means comparatively. I don't think it's bad necessarily. <laughs> I still give it a seven. I just think it's my least favorite arc. But yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, my problem is that I truly think that it was disorganized in terms of I don't think he, I don't think he handled the ever expansive cast of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. I know in grand scheme it was important, but I don't think he handled them all. It was jumping all over the place, right? Um, like, cause I, and <clears throat> like Pat said, I think it has incredible highs. Like, bro, Sabo, Mara, Mara, all that stuff was insane. Gear fourth, come on now, like, don't play with me. Like, that was all gas. But how did we get there? Was it seamless? I think it was really like a roller coaster, up and down. Like, sure, I would get an incredible reveal, but how I got there was never really, really, really great. It kind of reminds me of what happens in the last season of Game of Thrones with Daenerys, right? No one's necessarily mad 
that she mm. has that rage towards King's Landing. But did we build up that pro- that rage in that moment properly? Was it seamless? It wasn't. I'd argue. So that was my problem with Dressrosa and the and the arc and the fight with Dofi and um, Luffy to me is not even that great. I really don't think it's that great. I I think it's okay. It serves its purpose, but I think senior uh, Frankie's fight with Senior Pink is the best fight in that arc. Bro, I have a man. I now I know we're talking about the Labar, but I have to say this, bro. Like I peep the L- Luffy. Dolphy law fight again very recently i was on stream we we're watching just anime fights we just reacting to shit mm-hmm. i peeped it because someone recommended it and i'm like yo this fight was like low-key like it was okay naya but like there was some ass stuff in this fight bro like the yeah the, totally it, dropped the ball they the dragged fight. this shit out bro like like the thing i hated the most naya with this fight mm-hmm. was once the gamma knife takes effect, gear fourth comes out, bro. After he does the one round of gear fourth, the way that they dragged up until the second round of gear fourth, like running Dolphy all around the fucking city and all the like people there oh, keeping wow. Luffy away. Luffy! I, hated that. I hated that <laughs> shit, bro. That's why I stopped watching. I won't lie to you. Another another thing too is just like just just the uh the finality of of Doki versus uh, Luffy you know the the final clash that they have when Luffy uses his King Kong gun you know in the manga it's literally just a split second as soon as it as soon as it connects he breaks through Doki's strings and smashes him into the ground and in the anime they have them pushing back and forth for like for like a, a minute and a half or two I'm like bro what the hell is this like it's a power struggle yeah mm-hmm. it's uh, it's totally animation special sorry for getting off topic with that question but yo no no <clears throat> it's okay God damn. <laughs> I, I asked i asked because i was curious because I, I when you brought up the foxy arc most times when i ask people what their least favorite arc is they say that arc i could i mean just like this just, let's just continue the tangent while we're here it's fine the reason why i defend that arc so so much is like out because i have a little bit of a problem with our community in the sense that if i ask any one piece fan you why do you like one piece they'll tell me everything except the combat but what the fuck do i get Subjected to talking to all the time in any stream. <laughs> Hi, the floating, okay, right? Okay, very well. It is what it is. So I'm like, for someone, for for people who care about the power scaling so much, you know, this this arc is a very good indication of how One Piece combat works in a lot of cases. Look at it this way: Luffy beats two Logias back to back, right? Crocodile, a Warlord, and Naru. Gorgoro Goro no Mi, Invincible Fruit, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, he had the elemental advantage because he was rubber, but it is what it is. So, why is he struggling against Foxy? <laughs> like, I always say, like, One Piece combat is just a little more nuanced that people want to give it credit for. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to go crazy and say it's some, like, you know, some, like, you know, you know, JoJo fights. At some point, I feel like really, really, I'll say Stardust Crusaders, the strategy starts to really go crazy. Not that Stardust Crusaders doesn't have its have its moments but starfinger like come on stop 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 it but <laughs> stop it that should make me so mad every time i see like oh like i forgot he did this what do you, 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 you like never you, i think you can say like one more time but anyways um he lost he he was struggling with um foxy because of no 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 me a no no it's not a bad um fruit by the way like no 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 be like that shit raw right there's that he's conniving he's sneaky luffy's a bit not na- is um a bit naive no a naive, gullible. I don't say he's naive because he knows he understands the like concept of war and stuff and people about dying from where he came from. So he's not naive, and he, you, you know that with the, you know that with the talk with Vivi, but he, but he's like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? So you could trick him and all that stuff. Plus he's cheating. Plus an ability. So and people always argue, but people's, people's counter with me usually is like yo the stakes aren't high. I'm like that's a that's cap. Just because I'm you know, losing the chopper and if you watch the anime too, Nico Robin. Well, Robin's obviously important because of what she can do. She can read point of glyphs, so let's cut that out. But with Chopper, like, who cares if you lose Chopper? But I'm like, but what does Nakama mean to Luffy and his crew? That's extremely important to them, right? Is it not? If he, lo- you think Luffy's not pissed if you lose Chopper? It's a big deal. Okay, that's if the, you that's lose a crew life. member, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Whether they die or get assimilated to another crew, it's a big deal. The stakes are just as high. But for the combat part, I'm just saying... The fact that he had a good ability, you're fighting on somebody's home turf, and it turns out you're fighting Foxy on his ship, and he's cheating and doing all this maniacal, all the stuff that, that, that works against Luffy because he's kind of dumb. 
That's why he struggled. And that lets you know that One Piece fights are not as straight up as they as they can be. Crocodile even mentioned that Impel Down, you never know how two abilities are going to match up when the candle wax stops the poison before he goes, you know, full de venom demon mode and eroding everything. So I'm like, for you guys, for the meatheads, this arc is important. <laughs> so cut it out. Plus it's funny, so it's raw. And Al Kiji in there. Shout out to my goat. So. Uh, he's not my goat. He's already written, but yeah. So I'm just saying, like, it's, it's a great arc. I don't care. To me, the stretch of from Davy Back fight to Pulse and Ennius Lobbies is my favorite stretch of fiction. So, that's just me though. For me, it's always been the adventure, shifting, changing, world com over combat. And shout out to Starfinger, <laughs> the lighthearted arcs are bright and very fun. Yeah, you need you need that. You need to kind of come down sometimes. I think some of the best series always take a moment after a huge a battle, a huge scale war, or whatever, to just see the characters interact, do stuff, party, drink, whatever do some regular shit, and then you wrap back up. You crescendo back into that climax. So, back to Thriller Bar. <laughs> back to Thriller Bar. Nice. You're a for a minute. What's up, young Obama? But, um, okay, I actually want to ask you guys this question. Um, how did you guys feel about Gekka Moria? How do you feel about him as a character and as an antagonist, as an arc antagonist? And even as a Chichibu guy, like, go into all of that. Like, did you guys like him? Did you not like him? Underwhelming? How do you feel about it? Start with you, Pat. Go ahead. Oh, very sorry, sorry. Okay, so initially, the first thing that stood out was the laugh. Because I was just like, why are you laughing like that? <laughs> like, it should grow me. Shit, 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 shit. Boogie I'm like, bro, why are you sorry? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you got the best laugh in one piece. I love that shit. The mine's just boxy. What lie to you? <laughs> the way, like I said earlier, like the way he was so unbothered. When Luffy first came to Thriller Bark, man, he talked about some. Oh, you gonna beat my ass? And then he bring out his little, his uh, the bats, the brick bats, mm -hmm. and they were Luffy hell for a little bit. Can't even handle these bats. You talking beat my ass? And then Luffy hit him one time. He was like, "All right, it's like that lean forward, man." Serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I ain't playing around no more. But yeah, I kind of like that Zoro was like, the people that we're fighting here, they kind of trick you a little bit. And these are like the worst type of opponents for Luffy to fight because he's so straightforward. And that person like Nor uh, Moria is, for what he lacks in like strength and power and stuff like that, mm -hmm. he's the type of villain that like get the drop on you when you're not paying attention. Like he just show up, snip your shadow. Okay. And then he puts that in his little zombies. I hear you. I will say though, like the the recent arcs have made me respect Mario a lot more. Like he really does care about his crewmates. Yeah, that's true. Like, and, and, and especially after what happened to him prior, so he probably is like the ones that I do have that aren't zombies. I'm trying to keep them, you know. Hmm. Um, I'm warming up to Mario. He had old head, so he ain't as wild as the rookies. But he know how to make moves and build an arsenal. That's fair enough. Go ahead, Alan. He said. No, no, I just said he pulled up on Blackbeard for Absalom. Yeah, you said, said, don't get me. He said, we're teach. I said, that's, you, you yelling, you yelling for teach? You, you brave, you're a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't not looking for that nigga. <laughs> don't find me. Don't even look for me, bro. No, his control for his dumb fruit is crazy good. If he wasn't lazy, a lot of things would have changed. That's fair. Um, I agree you, with that. Okay. What about you, Sam? What do you, how, do you, how did you feel about Mario as an antagonist? Uh, initially, I didn't like Moria, um, but in hindsight, I like him a lot more, um, especially like even at the beginning of the stream, I started thinking about him in a different light, just like hearing y'all's thoughts on the, uh, the Kato rivalry, I, I kind of started thinking about him in a dynamic I hadn't been, mm -hmm. so it's like, I think seeing his story unfold in hindsight, him being defeated demoralized running back to paradise as you stated earlier and then ha how we got introduced to him it was something I, I i do give Oda credit for is he can introduce us to a character and give us some um indication of like why they are the way they are and then later on give us more information about something that can even um give us even more introspection into them you know what i mean so like 
uh, you bring it when y'all brought up the Kaido stuff, it gave me a new view on as um I think it was Pat mentioned, um, when we see him with his with his, you know, head in his hands and being down that way and, and acting the way he is and the comments Jinbei made, it's like, damn, like there's a whole nother side to your story, you know what I mean? So I think in Thriller Bark, I didn't like him too much, but like looking at hindsight, I appreciate his character a lot more. That's, that's kind of funny. I, th I would argue that we all kind of have the same opinion. It's like in retrospect, you're like, you know what? He wasn't that. He's not that bad. <laughs> you know, in retrospect, it's not even. Like, I think. Yeah. I think the problem is, I honestly didn't dislike him at all, and I really, I really thought he fit the kind of horror theme Oda was going for on Thriller Bark. I like the long net with the stitches and stuff like that. So actually. Like, like, did you look goofy? Of course, <laughs> of course. But this is one piece. I actually, I'm here for this. This is what I expect, in a lot of ways. His voice was definitely higher than I thought in the anime, so that threw me off initially at first. I, I've, I don't know why I thought he had my more like some, I don't know, some Dracula type. I want to suck your blood. I don't know what I was expecting, but <laughs> it wasn't that. It wasn't that. But I thought he was. I thought his ability was cool. I thought what he was doing, the fact that he had the biggest ship ever. I thought all. I thought all the things are really cool, but. My um my problem with him was I thought that when, I thought he got pushed into a corner, kind of easily as soon as like, um he tried to engage <laughs> himself. You know it's kind of funny when like he's like all right fine I'll come through. He's in the cockpit and stuff and I'm like I feel like he got kind of pressed really quick to the point where like I'm gonna absorb all these, all these uh, thousand um shadows. But I also I also thought about it. I thought about this today. I'm like, you know, Luffy's never used two gears at the same time before. Yay. Thank you for the sub, Miles. I appreciate it. Peace, peace. He never used two gears before, and I'm just like, should, should I put stock in that? Is that significant? Like he's never done jet shell before, and that shit put him on the ground. Like he was wiped. Like do I, do I put stock into that? But yeah, I don't have a problem with him. I never disliked him. I just thought that as a as a Shiji Bukai, he was the one that impressed me the least off rip. But as it builds, I'm like, no, he's fine. He's okay. <clears throat> that makes sense. Imagine if you had to make it to the new world with Oars. How long do you think he'd last? And would he have lost to Kaido again? He definitely would have lost to Kaido again. He's not beating him. <laughs> he's not beating Kaido. So let's just, let's just throw it out the window. Huh? Kaido would have smacked the shit out of Oars. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of want to just thunder Bagua through oars and the cockpit. <laughs> like, I don't know. But um, it is interesting to think about what kind of crew, what the, the crew could have, what damage they could have done in the new world to some degree. But I don't think those guys were, were that strong. I think I think the advantage he would have had was if nobody knew about the salt water or the salt thing, it's just like, how do you put them down? But also, now that we learned about hockey, Especially if you have like Conqueror's hockey to protect you from certain abilities, because remember Loth, like I can't move them. Their hockey is too strong. I don't even think Perona hacks would work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She and that that was a topic of discussion for a lot of time. time. People were like, with sugar too. Perona, uh -huh, Perona and Sugar, they were like, oh, they're broken. They can defeat anybody. Mm -hmm. Now that we know that you can protect yourself with hockey, if it's strong enough, mm -hmm. it puts things back into perspective. The new world really different. I totally agree. But um yeah, um, but yeah, definitely losing the Kaido win, that's for sure. Crocodile was a standard. You know Crocodile is literally my favorite character. So I was like, if it's not my guy, it's like, yo, yeah, y'all mid. <laughs> y'all mid. I'm joking. Prime Kisha, you already know. Mori was a guy when Kuma pulled up, he didn't care. All world deserve respect. They're all good characters and strong. I agree with that for the most part. Like they have something to offer. Like they were each a warlord for a reason. Whether or not you care about the reason, there was a reason for it, so what do you think Blackbird doing? You think you're having a battle as grand as Luffy? Wait, wait, what? You think Blackbird doing? You think you're having a battle as grand as Luffy? I don't know. Blackbeard, Blackbeard's opportunist. <laughs> Blackbeard's a real pirate. That's what I like about him. You don't, you don't care about all that honor shit. Fuck all that. I'm trying to win. Dubby's out here. All right, Sin, start us off. Uh, give us something. What do you. What do you. What my do you favorite like? part of Thriller Bark is. Involves one of my favorite characters in the series, and that is Usa versus Perona. Yes, sir. This, Mr. This, Negative. Let's get this, it. This fight, uh, <laughs> this fight gave Usopp a lot of growth, and it gave me a lot of like, um, a lot of like, uh, depth into like who he was. Like, if you look at his like his journey as Soja King, and like what he's trying to be. Like even going um, 
even like looking at later stuff down the line too like his insecurities are to me makes him super relatable as a character because like Usopp is one of those like human characters that he has a lot of the same mindsets that a lot of us go through at times like you know some people are, are, are more confident than others of course but there's always times in your life where like you can feel kind of how Usopp feels like am I replaceable am I as important as I'd like to be and like seeing him fight Perona and like the moment when he has to put the mask on to kind of like step back into like who Soja King is to to overcome this and like it was just a powerful moment man like Usopp's character is like um I did a really really awesome character analysis video on Usopp but unfortunately it got taken down because the Toei is on some bullshit but it's probably my favorite most, it's probably my 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 probably the most my most favorite video I've done like on my One Piece channel mm -hmm. um because I, I just love his character man like everything about him like him the, even down him losing his mother is relatable to me like bro it's just like mm -hmm. it's just crazy um Bad. the only thing the only thing with Usopp bro that like <laughs> I'd be like yo come on Usopp is like the lying bro like this man just be lying all the time but like I, just, <laughs> I understand it's part of his pepper. character <laughs> He just be always like, like it's the only thing I'm not like I can't relate to him like bro like Usopp yo I'm just I just don't be capping like that bro like I like, I fuck with you that. but like God. People yeah people do now nah, people be lying people definitely be be for, yeah for for facts facts and I think that's what is also goes into relatability bro a lot of people fucking lie about stupid shit just like Usopp lies about like important shit also stupid a lot of stupid shit he's lied about in the story yeah. unprovoked like you said like no one fucking asked that usopp like what are you lying for? like no one cares <laughs> you know what I mean? well, he'll still lie and like people do that shit bro like it, it's just funny bro it's funny but yeah that usopp perona fight you feel me like you said mr negative bro fire mm -hmm. i feel like um that's one of his in my opinion one of his biggest victories in the series mm -hmm. like he came through you know what i mean because like her Perona's ability is super hacks. You know what I mean? Like Usopp was just like the perfect person to defeat Perona, like yep. specifically, you know what I mean? So I fuck with that. That's my probably one of my favorite thing in uh in the arc. Sin. My nigga. I'm glad you said this. Because <laughs> every time niggas hating on Usopp, I'm just like, hey bro, what is Usopp? A regular person. He not like Zoro and they could cut different. He not like Sanji. That nigga's also cut different. He not Luffy. That nigga made of rubber. Chopper is a fucking reindeer monster. Frankie is a cyborg. Robin's a double fruit user. Brooke is dead already. Like, bro, this nigga has the lowest mortality, like, among the crew. If he gets smacked by the wrong person, it's over for him. Mm -hmm. But besides that, he still stick digging his heels. And come through when it matters most. How can you how can you not respect somebody like that? He in way over his head. That's like if one of us got put into the One Piece world and we gotta fight people like this. It'd be over in like five seconds. Yep. I respect. Ain't nothing like that's what I be telling niggas. I'd be like, Usa be fighting niggas way stronger than him, bro. Like none of y'all niggas will ever be able to do anything to these niggas that he's fighting. Like that's a fact. They be like Usopp soft. I'm like Usopp will beat the shit out of you, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> Miles said, Thriller Barker just hits every note from action, comedy to thriller to thriller. Even love with Hogback, Hippolola, emotional all around. Got the giant group fight, a lot of single fights, and you can remember it's like a perfect arc. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm happy that like I thought there'd be a lot more like you know a little more in, like contention here. You know, I, I know this it's an arc that I, usually when I uh, when I talk about. People are like, man, but I want to pick back off what you guys are saying because I think it's very important. Because and Pat, you'll appreciate this because you're a big JoJo fan like I am. What yes, I always appreciate about U Usopp is he to me is, is 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 he's he's our insert because if we're in the One Piece world, we're likely like Usopp. We got a fucking slingshot, my nigga. Like we're not <laughs> we're not we're not we're not we're not Kaido. We're not like cut it out, you know, like on average, right? So I've always liked that. So I like that you mentioned that like he's like the most him and Nami to me have always been kind of the most normal ones in a lot of ways. But Nami's still very genius talented and she has a very really powerful weapon and stuff. But not that Usopp isn't obviously like gadgets. 
Usopp to me is courage personified. Why do I say that? What did Zapelli say about courage back in, in Phantom Blood? See, to me, Luffy is fearless. That's different. He doesn't, he doesn't really understand the concept of being scared. Not that he doesn't get shocked and scared and blah, blah, blah. But Luffy's just a man of action. He goes head first. Okay. Right? He doesn't get intimidated by his opponents. Exactly. Ever. But if you're actually afraid of your opponent, afraid of a situation, and you overcome that, whether your legs are shaking, you're peeing yourself, your nose is running, but you overcome that, that's courage. And that's why I've always respected Usopp. Because when it matters most, even though it may look ugly, he plants his feet firmly on the ground and does what he has to do. Same thing with this fight. No one else could have beaten Perona. And if she was running wild, they would not get off this island. Give Usopp his respect. Facts, talk. Talk to these niggas, guys. Go ahead, Alan. Because I'm, 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 I'm about to talk about Perona, why she why, why she one of my favorite One Piece girls in the sex. Just continuing off the Usopp talk, is, uh, along with Usopp, I like how Thriller Bark is, is mostly a, um, a weakling trio perspective. You know, just because like, they're, they're the first ones we, we're following on the island, and we, we mostly see the, uh, the story unfold through, like, just from their side. Mm -hmm. So that, that, was, uh, that was something I really did enjoy about uh, in that arc, especially just like just, just like y'all said with uh, Usopp fighting Corona, and Usopp having to step up and be the one who who's able to get them out of a, 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 a sticky situation. Um, and along with what I mentioned earlier about uh, Chopper, but yeah, uh, other than that, the only I, I guess the only things I don't really like was fucking Absalom. Hey, that, that guy's a fucking loser. <laughs> like I, I just can't. Uh, I, I don't rate him. Okay, I'll get to in a second. I'll talk about the piranha real quick. Hada, 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 hada. Nah, I just think she's cute. That's all. She, uh, she, um, she has the gothic Lolita like like style. That I, that I like at the time I was at the time I was really into that style. I don't even remember one of my old handles was like that. <clears throat> it was like it was like I can't remember what it was, but the that part came from the gothic Lolita style. Because at one point I thought it was really cute and good looking. But I actually genuinely like her. Like she's funny. She kills me. And seeing her like with with uh, Zoro and Mihawk and stuff now too was just a nice treat to me. I just like her. I think she had a, a little bit of a glow up. I like her. I like how she looks post times. That's my ghost princess. She like top five for me. This turns of like appearances and look. And she got the. And she got like her eyes are diff are a lot different from most characters too, which I appreciate. Cause she has like the kind of like roundish kind of like rockly eyes, if you will. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, she's cool. Absalom is a loser. We could talk about him. Yeah, ah, like, like that god is dead. <laughs> <laughs> we packed that nigga. Let's go. Yeah, you, I, I, I was not messing with him. He's creeping me out, man. Then he had the little invisible guns in his head. So you talk about my dream, and you know what I always like about um, being able to talk about these arcs now when we're so much further that we could use hindsight and retrospect. It's the fact that Sanji challenged him when he was mad because that's the only thing that he wanted. But now Sanji has the rage suit, but he can turn invisible. Like that's just so funny to me. You know what I'm saying? With Stealth Black, like I love, I love things like that. Like the fact that we know Lola was is literally a kid, a child of Big Mom. Like we know that now. We 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 had we had an inkling, inkl had an inkling, we had a feeling, we weren't sure, but with the foreknowledge that we have, with all the things that happen later, sometimes when you come back to these arcs. You re it recontextualizes a couple of scenes, and I always appreciate that. So, yeah. You think Perona really went to Blackbeard Island for Maria? For Maria? Uh, nah, I think she's built like that. <laughs> she's not built like that. If she dead, if someone has her, if I see someone, some nigga from Blackbeard could use her power, I will be sick. <laughs> oh, I, will oh, be, shit. I will be. I will literally just cough on stream and be sick. I can't. I can't live like that. Okay. Um, let me think, let me think, let me, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think. At the very beginning of the arc, there's this one joke that just makes me laugh for some reason. Like, I, like, I, I always remember specific, very specific jokes in, in, in arcs for whatever reason. Like, in Water 7, one of my favorite ones, for whatever reason, is just Luffy trying to imitate Kaku, and he just fucks up, and he just bounces into the, off the wall into the water. <laughs> like, what is he doing? <laughs> Why is he like this? <laughs> Why is he like this? Remember when Luffy's like... Movies, they're like, oh, is it, it's like it's a zombie or whatever, whatever. Like, it's a zombie. Like, no, it's an old man in bandages. Like, that shit killed me. And when he pushed the zombie back into the ground, it's like, bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> Luffy said, nah, stay in the ground. Uh, when, the, uh, 
when, when Cerberus bit that nigga, Luffy's like, here, let me tame it. And he's bit, he's like, oh no, there's that's a good boy. It's a good boy. He punched that nigga into the wall, he's like, dumbass dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Someone in uh, Blackbeard's crew takes your ability and fights Usopp? Oh my god. No, nah, the shit that sticks out to me at the beginning of the arc is when Luffy, was it Frankie, Zoro, Sanji, and Robin, they go out to the, the island because Nami and the rest of them taking too long to get back. Mm-hmm. And then Perona's ghost is on the island, yes. and it goes through Luffy, and he's depressed. Then it goes through Frankie, he's also <laughs> depressed. And Zoro, like, they like that because they're always so carefree and let their guard down. <laughs> and then Zoro goes through and he say he wish he was never born. <laughs> and then Sanji's like, I saw something pretty interesting back there. <laughs> <laughs> God, God, I love their I love their relationship so much. Shit is so funny to me. Um, I, okay, I guess I guess we could talk about this because I think this is kind of significant. How do we? Uh, well, I guess this ties into some of Zoro's lineage a little bit. Seeing Ryuma's body or corpse having Brook Shadow in it, and how one of the later reveals we have with him Ryuma being a Shimotsuki and and, and um, Zoro coming from that island and likely being a descendant of Ryuma. How does that? How does how does this scene? How does this moment and this arc? How is that different to you now? Knowing that, knowing how truly powerful Ryuma really was and whatnot. Like, how does it, how does how was this moment recontextualized for you? I I actually I found revisiting this arc with that knowledge. I can't look at Ryuma's body the same anymore. Like I I hold in higher respect, in higher regard. That makes sense. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, I, bro. For me, bro, I was like. Okay, cool, Ryuma. At the time, I'm like, oh, okay, this dude's cool, I guess. Like, he gave Zoro a sword. Like, I didn't think nothing of him, really. Yeah. Initially. And then, like, now I'm like, oh, this thing is built different, apparently. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> again, once, once again, bro, Oda doing that shit, bro, where he's just like, we got a, our first initial thought of somebody, and then we find out some shit later, and we like, bro, what the fuck, bro? Like, this dude, the Shimosuke, they calling him sword god and shit. He's protected Wano for hella long, like, people hold, high, like, hold him in high regards on Wano, like, I'm just like, damn, like, I didn't think any of that when I first seen him, I just thought it was just a reason Oda was for, you know, to give Zoro a cool sword, like, that's what I looked at it as, like, yeah. I thought he'd just be a guy that we see and never see again, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, but, like, now I'm like, god damn, this nigga fire, like, see, it's because of moments like this, with, like, Ryuma and Thriller Bark, or like with the Sky Island people and the Nolan backstory with them talking about the Tom Tatas and stuff like that. Stuff like that is what always sets me off when people talk about some, oh, these arcs, because they're self-contained, they're not relevant throughout the rest of the series. So it's okay for you to just like look up the wiki or whatever, or some stupid dumb shit like that. I'm like, bro, shit like this is what makes One Piece special because you'll get a first impression of somebody and then you'll come away thinking okay that was cool i guess and then three four five arcs later down the line it gets recontextualized and you're just like the fuck and you could also I'm and also a lot of those a lot of that stuff too it makes it makes certain moments and lines you're like oh you were oh you were projecting here that's why you said this like sorry real quick them type of my goat crocodile the crocodile's line about you have no idea what's on these oceans. That's him literally pre- like, bro. You don't. You, you're saying this, but you don't get it. You haven't been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, crocodile. Ran, remember, he lost and he ran back to paradise. Like he understood that. So sometimes when you when these moments happen, when you go back, you're like, ah, now I know. Now I really know why you said this or did this or or what or, or this was your goal or plan. You see what I'm saying? Keep, sorry, keep going. Doesn't Mario have nah, a corpse I'm... of some famous rocks pirates? I don't even know. I don't, I don't recall seeing that. Oh, I think it was one. Maybe maybe there was one. Because didn't Luffy get a treasure from one of them? Somebody there? The thing on his arm? Am I tripping? Captain John. Yeah, there we go. Maybe. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But um, but yeah. That's that's one of the, the beauties of some of these arcs. Because like I would... I would I would be like if you read any like if you read like Punk Hazard now and you see Conjuro, you can't look at Conjuro the same way anymore. You know he's a traitor. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I love shit like that. So yeah. 
They said, uh... Not to mention, I think this is the first time that uh, Wayno and Kaido, or, like, Wayno, Kaido, and, uh, what else? Uh, I think it's just Wayno and Kaido. This is the, the first time that they're both even mentioned by name. Mm-hmm. And Wayno. so, yeah, just, like, saying, mm-hmm. not, not, not witnessing this art, like, per- speak of a personal experience, and not, not even, not witnessing this art, like, uh, as it happened. Mm-hmm. Or you know, just in just in order of when it was was in, it was intended to uh, to come up, you do miss out on a lot of shit. Like I didn't I didn't get to see Brooke uh, Brooke's initial you know initial meeting with Luffy and him joining the crew. I don't didn't see uh, uh, the meeting with Lola and even have, like getting the inkling of knowing that Lola might have been Big Mom's daughter. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just just like just like y'all were saying, just people telling you to skip arts. That shit is so stupid <laughs> because it's just you miss out on so much shit. Like uh. All, look, look, the introduction of Kuma as well, because this is his first appearance in the uh, the story uh, too, I think, right? It's not yes, the, sir. It's not the literal first time you see him, but you like properly like seeing him do stuff and take some type of action. Yes, because he does show up to the um, meeting when Sengoku calls it initially. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. He show up. Yeah, he, he was there with uh, Doflamingo. Yeah, and they were shocked, though. he showed up and like, "Why are you here?" He's like, yeah, "I'm just killing time, Nick." <laughs> 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 Business are going well. I know, you know, I got some time. <laughs> Might as well stroll out. Okay, just real quick on um, I, for, I forgot to talk about this when we we're talking about Mario. What do you guys? How do you guys feel about his ability? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Just, just, or do you like how he uses it? Or utilizes it? How do you feel about it in total? Like, even Yo, how did he? I just want to know how he used it at Marine Ford. <laughs> he got the big scissors. <laughs> that's like that's the only thing I know. The like, someone brought that up to me, and I was like trying to figure it out a way for me. I was trying to. Uh, I was in my protect Oda bag, so I was like, really, I was thinking hard. Yeah. And I was like, damn, yo, I really can't come up with nothing. So he had his cape in the wind. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't work, bro. I just had to give in. I was like, you know, usually I protect Oda if I can. You feel me? I do. Mm. But it, sometimes you just can't. You know, sometimes you just gotta let it go. You feel me? I feel like people in the fandom gotta learn that. You know, sometimes you just can't protect Oda. You know, you can try your hardest, but it's just some things you can't explain. You know, unfortunately. Yeah. I always, you know, but I always oh. like the concept of reversing the shadow and the body. I, that's the one thing. Yeah. That's the only thing I could really say about his ability that I really like. I thought it was really cool. I don't even know how he figured out he could take shadows and reanimate corpses. That's that's crazy to me. But yeah, you know your 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 shadow falls what you do. So when you remember how like how was he stretching? That was a crazy. I'm like wait a minute. How, wait, his hand actually. What the fuck just happened? I'm like wait. Did, did he take that? I remember at first, I was, I remember at first, because by this time I'm reading weekly, I'm like, did he take the essence of the fruit through the show? I'm, I'm doing all kinds of mental gymnastics on these forums. <laughs> for one manga, one manga.com forum back in the day, I'm doing all kinds of mental gymnastics. I was, I was obviously wrong, but I always found that part of his ability cool. Otherwise, yeah. No, that shit was terrifying, bro, because when it was fighting Orza at first, he talking about some gummo gummo no, and it's just a regular attack. But then when he actually stretched, I was like, oh, shit. Mm. Nah, he might be done for. <laughs> he might be done for. He talking about some gummo gummo pistol and he stretched. I was like, oh, my God. Nah, nah, nah. Somebody that big should not be using that move. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's why, that's why I know that because I'm going to transition to what, because since we're on Kuma, I want to transition to Kuma. Actually, wait, Alan, did you, Alan, chime in. Did you, what do you feel about his ability? Oh no, I, I like the ability. It's it's pretty cool. Okay. Do you, does anyone else wonder how we figured out to like cut shadows and throw them in people? <laughs> did Hogback teach him that? Why do you, why does he know that? <laughs> I, I you ever guys, you guys ever wonder if you eat a fruit, you somewhat instinctively get like an idea of how it works, or do you have to be creative? How do you guys how do you guys see that? Just out of curiosity. I think it's creativity because. When Luffy was using the Gummo Gummo no Me when he was a kid, he fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> he just sucked. I mean, even, like, it took him years Momo, to be Momo, nice. Momo. Momo barely can use his uh, double fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's another thing, too. Like, Momo seeing Kaido up close and give him some ideas, but we'll get to that when we get to it. But, yeah, um, I think that maybe he figured it out by just, you know, experimenting with his own, his own shadow once he noticed that makes, like, Maybe once he noticed that his shadow could be split from himself, he could probably do he tried to do it on somebody else. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Okay. So one of my favorite devil fruits in One Piece is the Niku Niku no Mi, Kuma's fruit. 
Yes, like, sir. It's top five. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. It's the, I, I kind of got a tie with, with Hawkins' is fruit um, for my favorite. <clears throat> but um, the reason the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I I honestly like at first it was cool. By the way, like um, I mean, do you actually? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I really like that he can repel things that are kind of intangible, you know, like pain and exhaustion. And then I wonder, can you do that with memories? You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like memories, stuff like emotions. Like, could I remove, ha- could I, could I remove sadness from a nigga? <laughs> like, could I, like you sad? <laughs> Man, don't be sad, nigga. Like, hold on. <laughs> just sw- swipe his hand and sh- slap the sound, the sadness out of him. Like, could I do that? Like, I always wondered, like how far you can go with that ability and I thought it was really cool and the Urusu shock shit was fucking go but um in fact he's also a part cyber I said this nigga is raw what the hell he's certified he took that sumo stance <laughs> he's like oh hold on hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm here for this I'm here for this so and I, and I kind of like Kuma too I don't have a problem with Kuma but yeah um anyone want to piggyback off that the ability Kuma right, anything of the sort uh, yeah, when I first saw Kuma, I thought he was invincible, man. Because, I mean, obviously they were tired because they just fought for their lives for hours. But, shit, they just tried to slash him, stick his paw out, and then just block the attack. Ursus shock, like you said, was devastating attack. He over here repelling damage. I'm just like, so how do you beat him then? Like, he can repel the damage from himself too, right? Hmm. Yeah. That'd be that'd be crazy. Like, I don't know if it works on himself, but that'll be that'll be crazy. Hold on. Okay, what comment I saw? What uh, what shit does we have to in One Piece explanation? No point thinking too hard. Like how Brook Devil Fruit is to be immortal, yet he can freeze people and astral projection of the skeleton. I actually took that as him as Brook misunderstanding his whole ability. His ability is to manipulate and control his soul, so he can go back into his body and reanimate it. Is that. Did anyone else? Is that, is that, am I alone on that? <laughs> I, I think that makes sense because uh, especially once, he, especially coming out of the time skip, and he he understands that he's the soul king and he can manipulate other people's souls. Yeah, and then you know, Big Mom Lily has that ability, and he's the only one who could, like hurt the homies and whatnot. So I think I think that's that's significant. So that's how I took it. Just 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 me personally, but fair enough. Kuma's fruit is air pressure manipulation or an abstract concept to repel living people. Kuma and Thriller Bark is first commander level and no one can change my mind. Only Mihawk is beating him at that time. Oh, Thriller Bark, Kuma. Yeah, Kuma would have been a problem for anyone to fight. With his, with his abilities and know-how and the cyborg stuff, man. Should have been crazy. Alright. But, uh, but yeah, what, what, how significant was Kuma's role for you guys here? I ask this because one of my friends, I remember, this is the exact chapter that he caught up. When Kuma just kind of steps to the front, and after Zoro's gonna do, is gonna deal with it. After Luffy's, uh, uh, Luffy's already tired, and then we can get to the nothing, nothing happened moment in a second. But, um, how did you guys feel about Kuma's role here? Because I actually thought that he was much more menacing as a, of a presence than Moria was the whole arc. Like I knew he was around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, go ahead. Oh no, yeah. Um, just just from the moment he shows up, he's just way more threatening than than what Moria was, because uh, because for for everything that Moria did, he wasn't actually trying to kill the or kill Luffy and at least uh Zoro and Sanji for a little while until later on because he needed their shadows, mm-hmm. and if they mm-hmm. died, you know, their bodies died, then uh, he wouldn't be able to use the shadows. So oh, at, he true. wasn't actually trying to kill them. But uh, once um once Kuma steps on the scene, you have no idea what what's on his mind, and he's going, you know, he's unleashing all these devastating attacks onto onto them. So it, it really seems like it could have been the end for the Straw Hat. Also, when Kuma first come to Thriller Bark, he's here to like, like warn Moria. He's like, "Yo, this man Luffy, you just be Crocodile. Now you about to be next." And Moria get mad at him. He was like, "Bro, what? Who the fuck are you talking to?" <laughs> he was like, "Bro, don't stop. He said, stop me fucking playing with me." Punk rookie. Yeah, bring his ass here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like Bro. he come here, he give the warning. Nigga don't listen. So he's like, "Well, okay." I'm over here thinking he just left. Nah, he's still around. He show up in front of Perona. He like, "Where you want to go?" And like, <laughs> in hindsight, we know he just sent her away to where Mihawk stay at, but. 
seeing it the first time, not knowing what he can do, you just swipe, boom, she gone. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Yeah, bro, that shit was crazy. Yeah, Kuma, yeah, I remember Kuma showing up, and I was like, bro, I don't know who this nigga is. Yo, but this nigga cold as shit. Like, I just remember thinking, like, <laughs> bro, this dude is cold as hell, bro. Like, came with the Bible, bro. I was like, oh, yeah, like, he, he's different. That's like, how I, I do. Like, remember... hold on, you hold the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, like, Pirate bro, he's different, bro. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, this nigga different, bro. Like, and then, like, but he ended up being cold and he ended up being, like, a fair person, you feel me? Which I didn't expect. I thought he was really going to be on some, like, super cold shit. Like, just not give a fuck shit and just go crazy but like he really was fair like he he gave you know given even given zoro the opportunity to to do that it's like okay he, he he does have some like sort of some sense of like uh morals i guess you know what i mean like he 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 isn't like a uh like a Dolph Lamingo, right where like Dolph Lamingo just doesn't give a fuck he'll just you know what i mean yeah. that he's just Dolph Lamingo. but kuma is like look i'm a pirate i gotta do what i gotta do you know, as a warlord and shit. However, he gave Zor- giving Zora the opportunity was kind of fire. Like I, s- I really fuck with Kuma's character. Um, it's kind of sad seeing him where he, what, what he's where he's at now, and you know, with at the reverie and shit, how he is. Uh, no, go ahead. Gene. I was just kind of it was just kind of like looking at him from th- from the Thriller Bark perspective, and then looking at him from the reverie perspective. I'm like, damn, yo, like, you like uh. What's that song? It was like, damn, homie. In high school, you was the man, <laughs> homie. What happened to you? Like, <laughs> like bro, that's kind of how I feel about Kuma. Like, damn, homie. Like, <laughs> like yo, it's like, even Sabo looking at him like, yo, Sabo getting mad and shit. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, that's, yo, what happened to my mans? Like, that's kind of how I feel, but I fuck with Kuma, though. What I, there's a thing, there's a, there's a thing in One Piece that happens a lot of times. I, I don't, I don't mind certain characters uh, abiding by like a bit of a code of honor and stuff. That's not my problem. I do want more pirates to do more pirate shit, you know? But uh, that's why I love that. Uh, like, that's why I love Blackbeard and whatnot. But there's always been a, a, a level of sense of romanticism of what it is to be a man in One Piece from pretty early on. Even when you see him don the armor and stuff, you know, they, they act a certain way, how all the boys act a certain way for the robots. Even Law was like, wait, ninjas nigga, huh? You know what I'm saying? Like that, <laughs> that's always been present, and I always find it, I always find it weird that no one, a lot of people don't talk about it, because it's like, Kyle Curry had this, and he was like, he was honestly ashamed that he had to get that blow in because Flampe helped him, right? But then you'll conversely you'll see someone like Crocodile, it's like, yo, the word unfair is meaningless to pirates, and I'm like, yeah, that's gas. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Pull out the poison, okay? Get the W. I don't want to hear none of this. This honorable stuff. But, yeah, Kuma was like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. If you could take all the pain and exhaustion from your captain, I'll leave. Dead ass. Like, all right. And he did that. And I was like, oh, shit. But, you know, when I noticed it, it was actually the day you back fight. It's when, it's when Aokiji beat Luffy and he's like, well, you chance me to a one-on-one. I'm kind of indebted to your grandfather, blah, blah, blah. And he just let it go. But after they're like, why did you leave Luffy there? And Zoro and Sanji are like, yo, he asked for a one-on-one. What do you want us to say? Like, that part, oh, the, what's it, what meant to be a man has always been there. Always. I didn't I, I even remember yes, that. I don't talk about that enough. You mean, you, you Romanticism. Know, yeah, I, I got to do that more. But yeah. Um, I like Kuma, though. I, I love his ability more, but I like Kuma. <laughs> He's wrong. I actually liked the fight too with him and Zoro. I thought it was good, even in the anime. Like I hey, think it was good. Like, she she's so is legendary. It's a, just a legendary she. Oh. That's one that bro, might be bro, better bro, than the one bro, against Dash Bones. It might be. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about Look, that. The first time <laughs> I'm binging One Piece. Mm-hmm. I think I, I told you before now, but I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't tell the other two. Summer of 2010, like bro, just waking up. You know, summer vacation. Niggas wake up, go on the computer watch one piece like 20 episodes a day go to sleep wake up rinse repeat <laughs> so i'm watching it i just finished water seven i was like damn that shit was some gas let me see what oda got in store for me watching thriller bark I'm like okay this arc not as good but it's still good get to the end they beat mori i was like okay we're done here boys let's go on to the next arc what's about to happen kuma show up i'm like wait this is against the rules. They can't be fighting. <laughs> this is against the rules. 
Oh, they can't be fighting two top tiers back to back. What's going on? He do the Ursa shock. I'm like, bro, what the fuck going on? Because you know, back then in 2010, like there was no social media, nothing like that. So I didn't know like what was going to happen. I didn't know who was in the crew or what. Like I didn't know what's going to happen in the future. I was in the forums, like that. nigga. I was in the forums, baby. <laughs> yeah, that that was the only thing we had. So I'm just over here like, bro. So what's about to happen? He pick up Luffy body. I'm like, bro. One piece about to end here. Ain't no way. I still got like 200 episodes left to watch. <laughs> you say about this man, Zoro. <laughs> oh, nah, I'm a, I'm I'm a dipping out, bro. But hey, appreciate you having me on, Brody. Just real quick, give me a yeah, what give, you need? give me give me a rating for um for for uh, Philip Bark. If you have to give got you, bro. Um, so I don't really have any arcs on One Piece like lower than a seven, low key. Mm -hmm. But and I kind of like Thriller Bark, so I'm probably going. I'm gonna roll with an eight for Thriller Bark. Let's go. All right, thank I'm gonna you. roll with an eight for That's Thriller Bark. Hey, appreciate y'all, man. Um, thank you for having me on the air as always. Always down to be on these, bro. So just hit me up. You feel me? Let me know. The Marine Ford one is gonna be a bigger one, so definitely. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me know, bro. Let me know. Marine Ford, definitely for me. I'll make sure. This was last minute. You feel me? So I had to, I had to make some time real quick. But let me know like like a week or so in advance for the next one, so I can stay for the whole time, bro. You All right, GBZ, brody. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh man. Girl, we don't have. Um, nah, I'm. I'm go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I'm watching this shit. I see somebody step. I'm like, I know those boots. It's Zoro. And it's just like, like this is all happening like within 0.5 seconds of my brain. It's shh, so so. I'm telling you, I almost fell out my fucking seat. I was just like, bro. This nigga Zoro still ready to fight. And then Zoro breathing heavily. You look at Kuma. It's not blood that came out. This man is oil. I'm like, nigga, he a robot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sideboard from that? And he went, the nigga opened him up and went, beep, 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 beep. I said, no, get out of there. <laughs> I said, Zoro, breathe, my nigga. Get out of there, bro. Holy shit. I have to say this. This is this had a quick aside. I actually, Zoro was actually one of the only characters in One Piece I truly freed for his life. Not, I, I won't say necessarily here. I was definitely scared, but to carry on into what happened later on in Sabaori, I was, mm -hmm. I was, a, I actually was afraid. I'm like, is he gonna, because I always thought like that would be a bold decision. Like, you take out his strong, Luffy's strongest member. You know what I'm saying? I was scared for him at that point, but sorry. But yeah, it, but I was gonna say, is that the best Sushi Sun Sun though? Is that the gold one? <laughs> That's that's the gold one for me, bro. I'm sorry. Like, the way it came out, the setup, like everything that happened after and before, it was just too great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 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 between it's between that one and the one against Das Bones. But I think it's one more because like you said, you see the foot and you just see the cut. And you're like, okay, he did something. Then you just see a robotic part. Then you can just pull up his arm like it's a sleeve. I'm like, there's no way he's a fucking robot. <laughs> and at the time, like we have Frankie, but we're like. First of all, he kind of sunned Frankie. <laughs> he, made fun, he made himself look stupid when he reflected the Firebird star back at him. <laughs> he's like, what a ridiculous name and title. And he's like, and he's like yeah, Frankie's only like robot from the front, you know? But he's just kind of like, yo, Zoro didn't even cut him, cut him. Like he opened him, but he didn't cut him, cut him. And then after, yeah, he started beeping, throwing beams and stuff. I'm like, this is so fucking crazy. I loved it though. That was amazing for me. That was amazing. That's a good. That's, that's a. That's a. That's a. I, the thing that I always give Thriller Bark, whether you like it or don't like it, you have to admit that it ends very powerfully. From the. It's from, the strongest conclusion in One Piece for me. You think so? Of okay, all oh, the you, arcs. You mean, you mean conclusion in terms of okay, yeah, not necessarily the climax. Okay, I got you to say. Actually, I th do I agree with that? I might agree with that. Hold on. Wait, do I agree with that? It's definitely Let's up go. There. It's definitely up there. Because with the Laboon story too, after this. And tying it back, like you, oh, you might you hold on. We got to something. You might, he might, he might have just did something right there. He might have just did something. But let's talk about uh, nothing happened. How fucking raw was that shit, bro? Thank God. Where's my cape? Hold on. Put this shit on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Before you, before you put your cape on, bro, let me just let me just inter interject here real quick. Oh, his his shit was pre iron. Go ahead, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> this is just another one of those reasons why, bro. Like, I, I was mad that niggas told me to skip Thriller Bark. I'm like, bro, why would you tell me to skip something that fucking wrong? 
Like, mm. the, even if you decide that nothing else in the arc matters, which is a fucking lie, why would you tell me to skip something that fucking wrong? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, at I minimum, I needed to see that. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm saying, bro, like, at the very least, you could have been like, hey, bro, just go to just go to this chapter or this episode and just watch this one part. Like, come on, man. It's my girlfriend seen that nothing happened moment via Facebook clip and got her to start watching One Piece. That's raw. Let's go. Hey. I read that. I read that. <laughs> go ahead, man. Look, this man, Zoro, tried to fight Kuma with, like, nothing left. Like, his tank is literally on E, screaming at him to stop moving. He over here, like, damn. There's nothing I could do to him right now. Like, even if I was at full strength, I don't even think I could beat him. He like, is there anything I could do to convince you to not take Luffy life? Mm -hmm. And then Kuma's like, I mean, probably. And he's like, he throw his swords aside. I'm like, Zoro, what you doing? This man get on his hands and knees and say, take my life instead. Because one day I'm going to be the world's strongest swordsman. I'm like, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, I'm like, too much is happening right now. <gasps> Luffy not going to die, but you going to die? Like, I don't like that alternative. And then Sanji get up. Yep. I got this shit like almost memorized. I'm like, oh, no, 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 Sanji, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, not my favorite character. Like, coming over here, like, bro, what happened to your dream of being the world's strongest swordsman? The person that's going to cause this crew the most trouble is this Kurashi no Sanji. I'm like, oh my God. And all these years, I never knew what he meant by that. And it's not until we get to Whole Cake Island. We find out he's from the Germa. Mm -hmm. Again. Come on, man. Visiting these Come scenes on, again with the knowledge that we have from later events, it kind of changes certain moments a little bit. But Sanji also being able to want him to lay his head down too for Luffy was crazy. And Brooke, was it Brooke? Who, who witnessed it? Brooke? Who, who had saw it? Was Brooke, it Brooke? Brookie, Brooke saw it because, you know, he ain't got no eyes, so he didn't know he was awake. And Robin heard it afterwards, okay, I think. Okay, That's, I, knew, I, knew two, I knew two people knew about it. I remember it. I'm like, hell yes. Join the adventure we're in. I think it was Brooke. Yeah, yeah, I remember it was Brooke. I thought Brooke was Brooke and someone else remembers Rob. But yeah, like, that's such an epic moment. And then like, I remember, like, do you remember how you felt the moment you saw him standing there and you were just that blood over the bricks and everywhere around him and like, bro. Nigga, he, I'm over he here okay? like, is he alive? <laughs> right? Is he okay? <laughs> and then Sanji's like, yo, what? Where'd he go? What the? What? Just he's just there. He's just shaking. Blood of blood cause a lip. <laughs> Not that happened. I said nigga. Bro. That's the thing. I will never ever entertain these Zoro versus Sanji debates. Mm -hmm. Talking about Zoro hates Sanji or Sanji hates Zoro. Like, no, bro, it's all nonsense. They don't at understand the end of the day, it properly. It's a rivalry, they don't but it's not hatred. It at all. Yeah. They they will they probably don't like each other, but they're still brothers. They love each other. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like everybody that you love. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Yep. Cause like I would um and, and, and anytime there's an external force, you know they're gonna work together against it anyways. Especially if it's against Luffy and whatnot. So you saw it right there, so Oh man, but that's a that's a honestly like a really 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 epic scene. It's actually not my favorite Zoro moment, but it's a really good fucking scene. Like it's a crazy 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 scene. So I have to appreciate it. it has a lasting impact on future arcs too. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. And Zoro always loses so much damn blood. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> so how did so when so when the Laboon story comes full circle, knowing that the Rumba Rumba Rumbar 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 pirates. Damn it. Yes. Okay. Rumble pirates. I want to say I want to say rumble. No, it's rumble ball. And I'm sick with that. Oh, anyways, anyways, when that when that all comes full circle, I, okay. So I just I have to admit this. I thought it was cool, but I promise you, I didn't give a fuck about that whale. I just didn't care. Uh -huh. I care more now. I care more now. I care more now. But when it first happened, I thought oh, this is cool. Okay, call me. I'm like, man, fuck Laboon. Let's leave. <laughs> 
that's just a powerful moment and like the moment where Brooke truly joins the crew, like he actually really joins it, pulls the thing out of his head, the tone dial stuff and everything. Like, that was all amazing. That was all good. But like, you, it's just you never, you really like. Did anyone think that the stuff with Laboon would ever be significant again? Like, that's really what got me. Like, that's cool. Like, no, oh, I don't shit. think that come back around. Like, I, I thought there was like a maybe a slight chance Oda would bring it back around at the end of the series. But no, I, I had no idea that she would come back in the form of a crew member. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's one of those things that gives Brooke a purpose on the crew. Yeah. And that's, that's why I keep trying to tell people, like, all the Straw Hats have a purpose. And it's, like, in more ways than one. Like, obviously, they have their set roles. But there's also something else that keeps them going, whether it's Luffy inspiring them or, like, they have something else that they have to accomplish at the end of the day. Like, Brooke having to go back and see Laboon after hundreds of years, this man never forgot about that whale and the whale never forgot about him? Come on, man. Are you a man if you don't want to see that reunion? You're not a man. You're not a man. You're right. <laughs> But yeah, that but that but like that's something I I have so much more appreciation for now, and I love it now. But I remember initially, uh, I initially I just thought it was like, oh, this is a cool like tie in, but I didn't like I didn't go crazy with it. If that if that makes sense. But now I'm like, nah, this was this was a really, I think I'm starting to agree with you. Like when I when I think about the end of an arc, I don't necessarily like to me. Like, I'll say this right. I have a problem with how Avatar. Like, like like a legend of Korra, I don't like how the conflict with Kuvira concludes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like that's I agree me. With you. I don't have a problem with the literal ending of Asami and Korra walking into the spirit realm to give them blah blah blah. Obviously, we know it continues in the comics, not the end. With with um yeah, that's fine. With that's Irene, fine. Irene Cole and blah, blah blah everything else, but that's kind of that's that's kind of like how I feel uh, like how I would look at it where it's like I don't actually have a problem with how like Mario and stuff went down but like with the Kuma stuff that's big and then the way that we wrap it up and then tie into something very important like you said it actually gives Brooke a, 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 a goal like yo there is somebody still left and you have to you have to live and come back around so you can make it to him to Delaboon to see him again powerful it's a very powerful ending to an arc I think I might agree with you I'm I'm gonna have to go through each arc in my head and think about it but it's definitely I think it's up there as how the arc itself just terminates, yeah. Especially when you think about like how he was by himself for all those years on that ship, mm-hmm. and then Luffy tells him that we met Laboon, because you know at the time they figured out that it was Laboon, but they didn't tell Brooke that they knew who he was talking about until the end of the arc. And you start bursting out in tears, and you say he's thankful for being alive. Like, bro, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff hits. That hit me. That hit me. That did hit me. That's one of my favorite moments. That yeah, hit me. That hit me because something that I enjoy <laughs> about um, characters who are kind of unkillable or immortal in a sense is how is their relationship with life. That's that's yeah. always that's always one of the most interesting concepts about it, like a vampire, or whatnot. Like um, like I'll just use like we know we know this this show and manga what this shit, but let me just use let me just use bad for a second from the Nazi no Taizai. One thing I really liked about why he really wanted the immortality, the immortality, uh, the eternal youth, whatever, fountain of youth from the, from the forest, was because he thought that he kind of almost didn't deserve to be alive and whatnot, and he thought that if he just lived long enough, he can find out why he should have been alive. Like, you know, like their actual relationship with life itself is something that I always find very interesting. So, no, that's, that's a powerful moment, man. It's like, it's like the fact that I lived this long and I still have a chance to see a laboon, I'm thankful that I was able to be, to be here today. Like, that's powerful. It hits. That shit moves me. It hits. I was moved. I also have to appreciate that it had a long and future arc. LeBlanc could death kick rocks when we first met him. Now I know better. Yeah, I feel that. He said, he says, Zora lost, but like he's a bronze saint in the sanctuary arc, man. They're getting their ass beat down. Shit was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> shit was crazy. Something in this arc that you're not a big fan of, that you didn't like. Um. For me, Shit. for me, Spider Monkey. You got, first, of, I I like apes. I don't fuck with spiders. Just, just, just. I just reject that thing's being. <laughs> one thing <laughs> I reject. don't like. Just reject. Oh, I got one. What? Man, why Robin didn't finish Tactics Fifteen, bro? Uh, she, <laughs> like, she, she said, "Nah, don't you ever in your sorry ass life ask me to fucking dog <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? 
She said, <laughs> she said it's embarrassing as a human being. <laughs> Oh, shit. oh my god! <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. What a good <laughs> I, I, I always, I always in my, in my brain, I could be wrong, but I have to think about every moment with Robin. That's the first time for me where Robin had like a bit of a gag. Mm hmm. Like, her gag was to say something like, oh, yeah, if they were all dead, the, like, the, the sea would be stained red. And Usopp's like, Usopp's like, yo, chill, 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 chill. Usopp's like, yo, chill, chill, chill. chill. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, for, she had the little, like, meow. And when, when they had the Niku Niku no me, she had, like, the little thought bubble of, like, the cat paws. And then um, her be like, nah. Because by the time we get to Zelda with Ryunosuke and the drawings and stuff, hindsight is even funnier because Kanjiro's a traitor. Um... She's like crying, and people are like, "What? What's going on with um Robin?" I'm like, "Yo, honestly, Oda had been slowly building to like getting her to be able to make all of those faces and gags because it took her a while, but he got it, it was there. The seedlings were there, and I think it starts with Thriller Bark personally. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, especially when you uh, get to Wayno and they they read the newspaper when Luffy gets arrested. <laughs> I mean, that face. This shit is fucking hilarious. Or when they have, they pretend to be a, uh, like haunted by by Brooke <laughs> across the fridge and they're like, they're like necks are like, <laughs> like, like four chins. <laughs> shit was funny, man. I remember because some people are really upset. They're like, oh, you're ruining Robin. I'm like, come on, dog. Just laugh. Stop being a loser. It's, it's one piece, man. <laughs> Just I actually, uh, no, nah, to, to, to piggyback off of off of that, I, I do think that also Thriller Bark was just a, like in that arc it felt like um Oda was shifting he was shifting the group around like the groups around a lot to try to get like all the straw hats a little like at least to me it felt like he was trying to get all the straw hats a little bit more comfortable mm -hmm. with uh Robin and uh Frankie and then you know Brooke of course too but you know, Brooke was all, all kind of doing his own thing I can agree with that I can agree with that but um yeah oh I had Adam something you something you weren't a fan of the arc I think you already said Absalom. He, we, we thought we said he's mid, but something else. If you have anything else, we're all, we're all go. Uh, you can go. I'll try to think of something else besides Absalom. Um, so my, I guess, I guess my only like, I guess issue is it's, it's kind of, I guess it's sort of a nitpick. But my only issue with this arc was it was it's actually it's kind of funny because it comes a little bit in hindsight. But anyways, my my biggest issue was just that. When I was when I first was reading it, week to week, and I have a problem with it because I actually thought the horror theme was appropriate and stuff. But it was actually um, the stuff with uh, is her name was it Cindy or Sindri? Sindri. Sindri Chan. Yeah. I was unmoved, fam. I was not moved by that story. With him breaking all breaking him. plates and her stuff like that. Back, I was unmoved. So it's not even like, oh, this is bad. Hold up, bad writing. Just like that shit did not hit me. I just said, bro, I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a <laughs> damn about this girl or this doctor. I don't fucking care. I only care that I only care that Chopper's mad. Or like, yo, I thought she was, you know, thought she was that dude, but you're not that dude. That's really that. That's really it. I did. I did. Remember my friend? I, I, I wanted to mention this because we talked about this recently. Because he was he was he was going to be here, but he couldn't. He has some construction stuff to do. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like how Zoro, Luffy, and Sanji lose their shadow and just wake up. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess how they lose their shadow. I, I, he doesn't like it. He didn't like that. I don't know if, if you guys had a problem with that. Because wasn't that like wasn't uh, that like spider like a, monk a beautiful spider mice? With meat. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I guess that like a, a beautiful. So, oh yeah, he starts with meat, and then they, they all woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just laughed. So I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know how anyone in the chat feels about this. I have a general rule of thumb when something kind of like a little bit nonsensical can happen. It's fiction, and One Piece is already very zany. Like I tell people, nigga, automatons took balloons and run it to the to the moon. One Piece is wacky. Okay, like I hate when they try to apply this extreme hard real world logic when it's convenient for their argument, whether for or against something. Let's cut it out. But. What's up to like, I was surprised that like, I'm, I'm using this example. When, um, damn it, what, what, what was the name of the giants that Usopp met in, um, any of his lobbies that were, uh, um, Usopp the O, fuck. Anyways. Um, um, I, 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 I fuck! I know. Ka I that, yeah. Kash and, um, what was the other one? Mm -hmm. Ah. Damn, <laughs> I only remember one said, of them. Omoy? Omoy or Kash? 
know, maybe. Is I'm that a, what it is? I'm gonna look. I'm a, someone look it up. <laughs> someone tells in the chat. But um, so Usopp is in really bad, in really bad condition, um, due to all the things that was happening, right? But do you remember when they all met, met, met up, met up? He just launched him, just threw him into the sky, and he lands. I actually remember people being mad. They're like, yo, he's already mad, super, super injured. You doing that, and he just gets up, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yo, it's funny, though, so it's okay. Like, for me, if yeah. something like that happens, and it legitimately just makes me laugh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna harp on it. Or you have to, it has to be very cool. If there's a cool, a coolness, humor, or a mixture of the both factor, I generally just be like, I'm not going to harp on it. Cause I laughed. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that, that, that is hey. kind of something like stupid to get uh, upset about, especially when Usopp got smacked in the head with a steel bat in Alabasta and got up right after that. Shit. Yeah. I was right. Let's go. Omeo and Omoy Kashi. and Kashi. Okay. That's their name. I, I just need one side with the O. The one with the weird nose. I remember. <laughs> the weird nose. I remember. Right, thank you. Thank you, Abdel. Yeah, One Piece's internal logic as it pertains to wackiness was an endearing feature for me. People being mad at Opie for being wacky is not whack. <laughs> no, I feel it because, like, it's it's, it all, it's like when people be like, uh, when they saw Queen and they're very supporting the Queen's design, and it's like, you're like 900 chapters to the story. You know what to expect. Oh, bro, bro, I don't understand. Look, before we got to Wano, we mm -hmm. saw what. Kinemon looked Wolf like. We like saw that. what Conjuro looked like. Mm -hmm. We saw what Rizo looked like. What on earth led you to believe that everybody in Wano was going to look raw? We have niggas from Wano with us. We know what they look like. <laughs> what are we complaining about? <laughs> This is supposed to be, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be Emperor Crew. Now he looks all goofy. <laughs> I want to do this line. Fucking loser. It's, it's honestly extreme intellectual dishonesty of the highest degree. And it really makes me mad because you're being obtuse on a purpose. You're harping on something that is a staple to the series. And it's very disrespectful. Yeah, so that's why that's why that's why those it'd be funny to me, and I still think Queen is wrong. So, Queen is still my favorite out of them. I said out of them, I don't know. King might King is raw. I don't know. He's raw, but <laughs> maybe laugh at that stuff. How do you guys think the the, the combat in this arc was? How do you like, do you like the, do you like the fights? Like Rima versus Zoro, Nightmare Luffy versus Ors and. Uh, I almost said Kuma. What the fuck is the name again? Oh, uh, shit. Moria. And even Luffy gets Moria. And his gear second and gear third breaks together. You know what I actually like about this arc too? I've got to talk about this. I like how they team up to fight against Oris. And break his spine and everything like that too. I love that. I love that. That was really good. Scott, uh, um, Frankie just building stairs mid-air? I don't know what is <laughs> heavy going strong. That shit, I don't know, man. It hits, man. It just hits. Like, they're just building a stairway on a stairway to heaven mid air, my nigga. Like, wow. <laughs> that shit go. I don't care. That's that 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 funny, bro. They were, they were like, bro, we can't get across. We can't get across here because the bridge fell. They turned around and Frankie had a whole detailed ass bridge. <laughs> they was like, give me thirty more seconds and I'll have this shit looking real nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I like stuff like that? It reminds me, <laughs> something that makes me laugh because it's like, okay, I imagine if Frankie was a video game character, he'd be a slow, a slow, bruising projectile user. But it's like he's a he's a he's a shipwright, so it's like taking his secondary skills and applying it to combat. So he's just building shit mid air. <laughs> I love it. I just love it because it's like a secondary ability. But I thought the team, the team fighting team dynamic against Ors and Mori was really good, especially them. Um, Usopp tried to launch the big bag of salt into the mouth, and then them going for the legs. That action sequence is really good. When Zoro goes for the legs and Sanji and stuff too, that's a really. I always remember how it was animated. That's a really good sequence. Um, how they animated it, it was really good. Then the heavy gong together, blah blah blah. Then Luffy coming from the top, them trying to freeze him a little bit, and then breaking the spine. Because what they did is something that I really like. I love when I love when certain stories get into certain types of um classes of ideals or. I'm not sure what to call this, but let's get into it. Like, being able to feel, being able to not feel pain, I would argue, is not a good thing. 
because you don't know it's which not. parts of your body to protect. So because Aura's like, this is her, it doesn't matter. He's not actually taking in all the accumulative damage that's happening. You don't, your spine is broken. Okay, you don't feel it, nigga. If your spine is broken, you can't walk. Spinal, my back is broken. I broke my back, Mike Tyson, okay? You <laughs> can't do nothing. So I like that. I like I like when things like that happen. So I like the fact they're like, no, like him him not being able to feel pain at all is actually working like it could we could work you could use that against him. So yeah. Combat was great. More using shadows to emulate Luffy's rubber was so good. Even the remember we turned into we turned into Sonic? That was crazy. It turned into a fucking ball. We turned into a fucking ball. Yeah. I was like, nigga, what's going on? Like, that's one thing that makes me appreciate Moria because his mastery of his devil fruit to be able to warp the body structure of anything using their shadows is a pretty lethal ability. Yep. Do you think that like that that uh no nah, he he explained it. I'm about to say like do you think it, it works best on uh like on zombies since they don't have like bones that could be fucking that, that would you know fuck them over completely or is it just doesn't yeah. matter? I think I think it's the zombies because like a regular human being, they probably die from their bones being broken like they that. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> cracking like they they, they have the clutch. So, <clears throat> top ten moments for the crew is we refuse two goat moments back to back. Oh yeah, that was a great moment. They're like we refuse, and that's he's like, okay then, nigga. <laughs> I said, oh no, not like this, man. So yeah. Only um, once like today you can feed the lost children of the podcast. <laughs> oh man, the big ass fucking kids. Nightmare Luffy was also so random, but fun and great to watch. It's like a weird fever dream, but it works. I love Nightmare Luffy. Let's talk about that. Listen, man. That nigga just came. He stopped the punch. No, I said, oh oh. That nigga said, "There's only one Luffy." He said, it's- "That's me." Yeah. Bro, that man talking so slow, he like, oh, that was Monkey D. Luffy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nah, I still got Naya taking Twitter buns with a broken spine. <laughs> Not where Luffy was rough. Like, you know, it, was, it was really good. But, um, I, I, I like that moment a lot. I like how it was really animated, but I just like, I, I, I don't give a mouse to it's, it's, like, it's like a random little fun thing that they did, because, but I think it was significant. I think it was just a cool moment. And it shows, Luke. It show. I guess if you want to force some connection, it's just a testament to Luffy's overall willpower and his, you know, tenacity. Because it's like most people can't really handle more than a couple or one shadow, and they threw a hundred of them shits in Luffy. Now Moria was able to do a thousand, but he's supposed to be the master of shadows or anything, regardless. Anyway, but Moria didn't even display any of the techniques and abilities. That he got from the shadows he absorbed. That was something I forgot to bring up. That kind of shocked me. Because remember Luffy used his sword? And you're like, huh? Nigga? Yep. You, mm-hmm. you brain dead. You punch. You can't, you, can't, you can't use the blade. Like, Moria absorbing all of those shadows and still not displaying any, like, combat thing that some, some random guy, you know, I thought that was a little bit strange. But I do also know he was pushing the brink and probably not thinking straight. He just went like, I'm big as fuck now. I'm mad as shit. You're not in that form. Brick back black box. You're like, I'm, I'm rubber, nigga. So I'm good. <laughs> Hockey up, Moria. What's wrong with you? So, yeah. Night Luffy was raw. Sun God knows going to shine through the darkness. Hey, Luffy's out here, man. Is there anything significant you think we need to touch on? Um, When Sanji turned Super Saiyan, when he heard about what Absalom did to Nami... <laughs> Yeah, they had not. They had Nami. They had Nami was just getting ho- ho- whored out that whole heart in the shower. Absalom just like oh, I'm invisible. But yeah, go ahead. Let's talk about it. Uh, and it was like Nami's old. Hey Sanji, you're not gonna believe this, but Absalom licked Robin. What? And then on top of that, he was groping Nami. He was like, he what? <laughs> <laughs> that Lunaria <laughs> DNA. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. When this nigga came into the wedding room, re- <laughs> it shit was so cold. Yeah, he they was- would beat this shit out of Absalom. you like, you stole my dream from me. <laughs> <laughs> the dream lives, my guy. Sanji, never give up on your dreams, man. You, you, you like, what the fuck you talking about, bro? <laughs> 
Like, you know, we have so person that be like, like, who oh, are you? Look with the banner from the Scarlet Witch, and she was like, you took everything from me. And he's like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that was that was great. I guess we could we could we can talk about some of those like other zombies stuff or anything. How do you guys feel about like Lola and and all that stuff? Now that we know about well, Lola, she fallen the twins and um, is his name Pound? Their dad, their dad name is Pound, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I I I found it interesting to revisit, knowing what I know now. But I it didn't necessarily change my perception of the roles that they had in the arc. I think it worked good. I think I think that it's cool that it kind of translated to the real body with Nami talking with whatever. But excuse me, so, wait, will of P? They said will of P. <laughs> oh man, shout out to Pell. He really should be. He really should be dead. That shit's wild. But, I can't. I can't explain that. It's the one thing in One Piece I can't fully. Explain. I won't even try to defend it. I'll just look at. I'll I'll put my hands up like, nah, you got that one, man. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I think it was that nigga is dead in my heart. <laughs> I saw I, I think I saw him in Reverie. I said, nah, he's not there, bro. I didn't see that. <laughs> I I think I made my whole head cat. I don't even remember if he was there. I think I did see him because because obviously um the, the the dog guy, Chaka. Chaka? Shit, that's crazy. But anyways. Yeah. I don't remember my I don't even know what I was talking about. That's my point. What was I saying? Let's talk about Oris. Let's talk about Oris. Junior? He was talking about Lola and Pound. Oh. Yeah. They're cool. I don't know what I was gonna say though. I really lost my train of thought. <laughs> you know, you know I am, bro. You know, you know my memory just is just shit. That's why. I, you know what it is though. I've been I've been good today. Like, see, when I was going on tangents, I'd write, I would write down what I was talking about. But I finally write it down this time, so I don't remember. Cause I remember my point. I had, I had a point. Oh man. I, I had to do with family, but I don't remember. But anyways, this is what it is. Ors. Not Ors Junior. Ors Junior is the one that we saw in Marine Ford. How do you feel? How do you feel about Ors? Um. Did you? I, I think. Did, I think. I, I'll say. I'll start. The only thing I appreciate about it is just how it ties into like actually seeing his descendant. Like we actually did see that and stuff. That was pretty cool. And I, I am. Start, I don't know if I'm forcing these, and I, I'm starting to realize that Wano and Filibark are connected in a lot of ways. If you really want to think about it, because it's Wano. Yes. It's Wano where Ace makes the hat that protects Ori Junior from the. From the um from the sun, right? Yes. And then I'm just thinking about the fact that we saw like that's, I just I just it's an interesting interesting thought there. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm overselling that, but yeah, they be out here. But go ahead. Just to just to uh, interject real quick, like uh, uh just to go along with that is also you know uh in in a uh, in Thriller Bark is when the Straw Hats team up to fight against Ors, but you know when when they see one of the uh. Uh, one of the one of the um continent pullers, like one of the continent pullers in Wayno, also this they're like, you know, if it was back, if we were as weak as we were back then, you know, it would take all of us to beat him. But at at, at our at our current level, you know, it, it's only going to take just one of them, and we can knock them out in one hit. So mm -hmm. That's just another uh, example of it coming full circle. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, I stepped away for a second. Just, 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 just repeat what you said at the beginning. And come to the end. You're talking about, he said he was talking about the um, the current arc right now. With they was finding numbers. Oh, okay. And they looked at the numbers. They're like, oh, you're just as big as ours. Ah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. There's something about the sun. There's something about this. I had a force connection with the sun for some. I don't remember what I was gonna say though. I had a force connection, but I, I know it's force. Let me just stop. <laughs> Let me just stop. But. Um, does anybody, if anyone in the chat has any questions or anything in the arc we think we forgot to touch on or speak about, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and if you, if you guys think there's anything significant that we missed, let's, um, let's, let's mention that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go, I'm trying to kind of go through everything in my head. I, kind of, I think all the major important things I wanted to talk about, the giant shadows, hey, yeah, they were like the Florian Triangle or something like that, right? That was also pretty dope, pretty cool. <laughs> Florian, tri Florian Triangle. There's, I, I know there's something. I'm, there's something important I'm forgetting to mention. I know I am. That's why I don't want to leave yet. <laughs> you know me. Everything that's funny in One Piece to me is important. Yes. So oh, yeah. when Luffy put that zombie back yeah, into the grave, I lost my mind. <laughs> I'm gonna have to rewatch this man. Go ahead, sorry. He, he, he looked at the fucking zombie come out the grave, dropped his little catcher stick or whatever, walked towards him. 
put it back in the drain like yosh yosh. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't breathe, bro. Like, it's an old man with a lot of wounds and bandages. No, it's a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> the one time is actually an old man with a bunch of wounds and everything. Oh, the zombie. No, I'm an old man. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. That shit just too funny to me. Like, how you gonna put a zombie back into the grave? <laughs> He's like, no. I don't accept this. <laughs> He's like, oh, man. man I love Mario that guy. having a ship the size of the islands and saying the thing about Yeah, him having the biggest ship ever was really, really cool. I actually like that a lot. Like, I like the I like the I like the cool I like cool ships in One Piece. So like Thriller Bark is cool in that sense. The Sunny Go I think is cool because of the Kuda Burst. I love. Is it what what's what's um major ship called the Nost- Nostrilo Castro something like that Castro? Yeah, Nostrilo Castello. Yeah, because it's amphibious. I'm sorry though. When he didn't slow down, that shit was going on land. That was that was gas. That was that was really cool. Then they nigga oven tried to step in front of it like a dumbass. <laughs> he fucking got moved to the like, side. Like oven, you're not that guy, pal. Like just come back. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> All right, no, I appreciate you. But um, thriller bark was so many funny. Almost definitely one of my favorite arcs. I like to hear that. Are you speaking of which? How, like I'm not tell- I'm not telling you to rank the arc per se, but exact. What? Where would you? Where would you kind of have it? Like, is it upper echelon, lower echelon, sovereign? Oh, shit. What's up, Jay? Mmm. Mmm. What's up, game? <laughs> hey. What is going on, man? I am now at full power. <laughs> we have the two biggest Sanji fans in the world. In here. That's all. That's to be done. Oh, How you doing, man? I'm doing good, brother. How you doing? Uh, I can't complain. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. My I'm body doesn't hurt that much, so. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> Yeah, my oh. bad. I was a little late. I had a I had a previous uh, engagement, so I'm here now. Yeah. He's out there slashing. We know about him. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, what, what does that even mean? That, 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 <laughs> Sid, Sid was here earlier. That's why. That's why I had to, I just, I had to say that. So, but, um... oh, <laughs> All right, let's 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 get what, get get your thoughts on some stuff with both Taylor Bark. You you've been here for one of these already, so you know how it goes. But yes, sir. Um, I guess I'll just ask you. I'll just ask you a bunch of stuff that I asked. Earlier. Actually, no. I mean, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start here because the first question that I asked everybody, uh, everybody here. I want your thoughts on this, right? So when you initially heard that Kaido and Moria were rivals, right? Yeah. How did you interpret that? Like, how did how, how what how did you interpret that without really have no having too much knowledge about the two characters? And then how do you feel about it in hindsight, knowing how fucking monstrous Kaido is? I. Wait, wait, wait. At the time, you didn't think we didn't know that Kaido was monstrous, but I always assumed Moria was like uh, one of those rivals, kind of like Crocodile was the White Beard or Ace was the White Beard, where he just kind of tried to take Kaido down, but he got folded like a lawn chair. Mm-hmm. Because he said Kaido killed all his crew. Yeah, it is. So I'm like, yeah. okay, that's what I was like. Yeah, so I'm like, clearly you want up the standard. Like that—that that was my first intention. Mm-hmm. So I didn't take it too seriously. I thought, okay, Moria had a little clout here and there. He he he, could, he was probably a little strong, but I guess we just we always I always assumed he was like the fat Moria. So uh, again, he survived it. So I'm, I assumed he was pretty strong, but I really didn't put too much stock into that. Okay. The, the, the only the only reason that I say that is because I think I was one of the few people. Sometimes when I hear something like that, like. I my the way that my brain works, it doesn't. I I don't think I process it the way like the author want intended me to do it. I think they wanted me to think that, but I'm like, I see it almost similar. To, like I could I could I say this. You can argue Kid and Luffy are rivals, but to me, they're not rivals in the sense that they're con- like like someone said earlier. They're not they're constantly crossing paths, but it's because anytime Luffy accomplishes something crazy in in in, in the media, Kid is probably somewhere in the Grand Line doing something equally as impressive. So from the outside looking in, it's like they're competing. It's like, oh, Luffy just beat Crocodile. Well, Kid just did all the civilian damage and blah, blah, blah. So it's like they're competing almost in the eyes of the news and the media. So that's how I saw it. And now in hindsight, I'm like, no, this is a joke. Kaido would fold you, you fucking bitch-ass nigga. It's not a rivalry. <laughs> so that's how I saw it. Okay. Um... How do you feel about this? The, the, some, okay, so how, do, how did I frame this before? Because I was talking about the Ryuma stuff, right? Because Ryuma initially for me was a kind of an unassuming zombie. I just knew he was some strong samurai from 
some samurai island. I'm on Wano now. I know he's a sword god. I know Zoro's related to him. Is, is that is this moment at all recontextualized for you, knowing how actually how powerful Ryoma is supposed to be? Um. Yes, just because we know the soul that was in his body was a Ryuma, and I think the power of the soul is more relevant than the body itself. Okay. So if it was actually Ryuma's soul and his body, I think Ryuma would have been broken. I think he would have folded Zoro. But you know what case, I agree with you? I think about what Sanji was able to do in Nami's body, d- despite Nami's body not being that powerful. But that's the different. Nuwak. That's fair. That's di- that's different because it's shadows. If you look at Sanji, remember Sanji, sh- Sanji's shadow was in that little dog. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he had good kicks, but at the end of the day, that dog was a piece of shit. You could have folded that dog anyway. It's just like <laughs> he had good kicking ability. That's about it. No, what I'm saying is, like, I find if the <laughs> person's <laughs> spirit is in the body, whatever you want to call it, yeah, it's better than it being vice versa, where it's like you have some some lame in a, somebody who used to be powerful when they were alive. That makes sense. That's true. Yeah. That's okay. Kind of, that's kind I don't of mean, I, I would say one of the contexts is you use ores, for example. Mm-hmm. Ors was using Luffy's moves in his body, but I'm sure, like you know, that that Ors probably had special moves that probably made him even stronger than Luffy's shadow in that body. I can agree with that. You never. So there's like, yeah. yeah. So there's like, I think there's like drawbacks to it. Like, if you have a strong shadow, sure, it'll, be, it, it'll probably be good, right? So it's, think about it. It's like the same thing with Big Mom's homies. Mm-hmm. If Big Mom has Luffy's soul as a homie, that homie will probably be really strong, but I don't think it'll be near the capacity of how strong Luffy really would be in his normal body. Okay. I can agree with that. Yeah. Miles said, if we agree all warlords are commander level, then Moria fighting him when assumed in shape and healthy is very impressive. I don't think him losing his crew is that crazy. It's just rare because most pirates aren't that bloodthirsty, so hearing it makes it stand stand out more. I would honestly surmise that he didn't put up the best of fights against Kaido. I'm sorry, Kaido's a monster. I'm not giving him credit. <laughs> like <laughs> Oda's Oda was a monster too. He put him down, so I can't give him credit there. I don't I don't really get into all that commander level stuff. It's not really something it's not really a concept I personally believe in, so but I hear what you're saying. Or is doing Luffy's moves with Mario's doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo- yeah, he was making him. But he just went in general. He was trying to do Gomu Gomu no stuff. But yeah, Mar- but Mario's manipulating the shadow to make him stretch and everything like that. Yeah. How do you feel? The, how do you feel the combat, the fights in the arc, in general? So Zoro, Ryuma, you know, I guess the Spider Monkey. I, I was talking about how I thought the team up against uh, Oris was really good. That was really good. Frankie building shit midair, <laughs> like shit like that. Like, I I thought it was really good. How do you feel with the combat in this arc? Ah, uh, Corona versus Usopp, go. You know, ironically, it really wasn't that bad. I think Sanji versus Absalom was kind of meh. Absalom, mid. Uh, yeah, it was kind of meh. Um, it was comedy relief. Brooke, Brooke versus the Spider was cool. Zoro versus Ryuma was brief but cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Ors team up was the best part. Spider. Uh, you know, anytime I see anti mount kick course, you you know it's ready to go, nigga. Like, come yes, on. Yes, sir. Oh, man. The fact that... Power. Ah, son, <laughs> listen, bro. People swear Sanji can't beat big opponents. Look anti mount kick course, nigga, and shut your mouth. Like, I tell you, if he uses it <laughs> one bro, I'm out. I'm, I'm ascending. I'm gone. You're not going to see me. If I, he uses I, I, it I, Put some fire on that, yo. Flaming anti mount Put some stuff. fire. Nigga. Yeah. Like, to this day. When Sanji used the anti mana kick course on that banana crocodile, Crocodile. niggas didn't know how good, niggas didn't know how raw Sanji was till they saw that. This nigga's kicking a giant crocodile. Just like, bro. And the thing is, is like, you know, in soccer, you talk about violence. No backlift, my nigga. No backlift. <laughs> no backlift. No backlift, no back my nigga. They didn't see it coming, son. I'm like, I, I, okay. <laughs> Man was standing still and kicked that bitch up. He said, fuck out of here. Listen. <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, you got everything you wanted from the Ors team up. Nightmare Luffy was raw. Yes. Luffy versus Ors, mid. Uh, Luffy versus Moria, mid. 
I don't disagree, but I was thinking about this like literally midstream. I'm like, do I put stock in the fact that he's never tried to use gear third and second in conjunction in conjunction, but he did against Moria? Is that significant? Should I should I give Moria credit for pulling it out of Luffy? <laughs> like, I don't, that's my only thing. That's my only thing. But he beat that nigga with a building, son. That's how you beat Moria with a building. I'm like, all right, you got it. You got it. <laughs> However, the Kuma, Zoro, and Sanji stuff Talk about was it. gassed. Gassed. Yes, sir. Gassed. That was Talk gassed. To him. That was gassed. Because, like, you know, to me, I have two Zoro moves that I will never, never not love. Shishi Sonson. And I think the Shishi Sonson we saw against Kuma is the best one he's ever used. Yeah. Fuck the alabaster one. Fuck that shit. Fuck the alabaster what's the, one. You what's, the, f- what's the first thing I said? This might be better than the Chichi Sun Sun he did yeah. against Dasmo. Because the first you didn't thing I even said. see it. Because you didn't see it. But it's like it's the abrupt. It was so abrupt. Yeah. The moment he saw him pick up Luffy, Chichi Sun Sun. I'm like, oh, this nigga moving. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> and then Kuma's yeah. like, uh, I'm a cyborg. I'm like, yeah, yeah, girl. yeah. He didn't do nothing, but it was raw. It was definitely raw. I was like, okay. And it's like, I think I like Kuma in general because I think his power is so cool. It's my favorite. Like, it's favorite so movie. cool. I think, like, he is so first. underrated. Yeah. Kuma is washing so many niggas in the verse. People don't understand. They just don't get it. But the Zoro, Asanji, and Kuma stuff is so underrated. And I think people really don't put enough stock into what we just saw there because Kuma is at the top. I think when you think about the Warlords and the Shichibukai, we all thought they were bombs, but when you put it into when you lift you list the names and their capabilities. Mihawk, strongest swordsman in the world. Doflamingo, Luffy had to use Gear Four three times, two to three times, just to put this nigga in the ground, and he had internal damage. Then you have Boa Hancock, Conqueror's hockey confirmed, knows all the hockeys. Her devil second strongest turns niggas woman to in One Piece. Second strongest woman in One Piece. Then you put um what's uh Kuma. Like Kuma in his right mind broken already. Mm-hmm. Crocodile, he lost to Pre-Gears Luffy. This nigga out here parrying Mihawk and Marine Ford. What are we talking about here? Go right, <laughs> top one, the greatest. You the see what I'm saying? Best. The best. The best. And then you have, best. then you have Jinbei, <laughs> Warlord of the Sea, to the point where niggas in Wano like, God damn, these niggas got Jinbei. How many niggas do you need? So, so you have that. <laughs> The only bum in there was technically Moria, and he's just he's technically retired. Think about Moria as Carmelo Anthony right now. He got a good, oh he got a good. God. I'm sorry, I, it's, no, because I, it's not I didn't me, mean it's it to be me. disrespectful. There's a mellow fan, but you just, you just, you just, oh, yeah. man. Well, I don't mean it to be disrespectful, but it's like Melo is not the type of nigga to drop 30 every night. Moria probably in his prime was dropping 30 every night, but now Moria is a nigga that drops 15 on on, on uh, uh, catch and shoot jumpers. You know what I mean? So, like, that's where he's at now. So, the, the Shijibu Kai are serious. So, then when you get the view of Kuma and you see him washing everybody, it's like, this is hype. Yep. Yeah. You know, so it's. I think it's spitting. I think it's Jay's spitting. It's a lot, man. Like, I, Thriller Bark is very underrated. Yeah, I, that, much, that much I agree with. I don't. I I was I was kind of shocked that like I, I honestly thought I would get a lot more like a little more contention in the chat because I know when we was talking about the Davy back fight, people were not trying to hear that like yo skip this we don't seven. I'm like nah, are we talking about Noto Noto being nigga? I that arg raw. I don't care. No one tell me. But yeah. Um, I have one more. I have one more major question that I think I asked everybody. I want to ask you, but it's, it's not coming to me right now. But I want to ask you this: Is there anything about this arc that you're not a particular particular fan of? Any critique? Even as a nitpick? Uh, Hodgeback was mid. Yeah. What did I say about the Sindri and Hodgeback? They actually did not yeah, move. Yeah, me. Yeah, I did not care. Did not move. Did, did, did <laughs> oh, not no move. Moved. No movement. Uh, Absalom was mid. <laughs> The Lola plot line served its purpose, but it didn't really hit me that much. It, it, it means more in retrospect than it does in exactly. the first time. Yeah, it means more in hindsight. You know, that he's just like, oh, yeah, hindsight 2020, whatever, nigga. Um, One Piece fans like to do that. Oh, but it mattered later on. No, that shit was still ass in the moment. Fuck you, nigga. That's that's my mentality. <laughs> Cut it out. Cut it out. It's ass. Um, uh, The comedy was great. 
That's for sure. Comedy Bro, was great. It's, so I would, it's the second funniest arc in One Piece. I agree. Movie behind Sky P F. Sky P is funny as hell. Thank God you it's said still, Sky P is so <laughs> funny, nigga. Sky P is so fucking God. funny. <laughs> oh lord. Nah, but I would say. The only things I didn't like is I didn't care about Absalom. I didn't care about Hodgeback and Sindri. Mm-hmm. And, <clears> and um, the Lola plot yeah, The Lola plot line didn't really mean anything to me. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, the rest was okay. The rest was good. It was like from I would range it from like a 6 out of 10 to an 8 out of 10. I don't think anything was really a 10 out of 10, mm-hmm. except for the Kuma stuff. To be honest, Dolphy would pass the faces. Even Jibay couldn't put him down. Mario also took a lot of hits from Luffy. Yeah, but... I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think Mario's weak or anything like that to that degree. I just think that he yeah. his laziness and his idea to try to use zombies. Oh, I remember. I remember. I kind of remember what I'm about to say now. Um, actually, just before I get there, just talk to me real quick. How did you feel about Gekko Mario as an antagonist for this arc? Because I was speaking about how I felt like Kuma, Kuma looming to me was always more dangerous than whatever Mario had was concocting. Like it was like, more. Uh, go ahead. No, no, I'm done. Go ahead. No, so it w- Kuma was definitely much more of a fearsome opponent and antagonist. I think the shadow plot line okay. gave you gave me enough dread and the danger sun, in the arc. The yeah, okay, you know, with the sun and the, the the fear of everything being over, that was enough for me. So I think it was more Moria's powers powers than Moria himself. Do you like his ability? I think it's really cool. I think there could have been a lot more done with it too. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a really cool power. I just think Oda went in a different direction than using shadow powers than I thought he would. Mm-hmm. Brick Bat was raw though, nigga. That's my shit. Brick Bat. <laughs> 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 Oh man, too many. The laugh was top tier. Yeah. I won't lie. The laugh was top tier. It's up there. It's one of my favorites. Might as well it's also be Foxy. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Every time I hear it, I just I start chuckling every time. He's it's just my ringtone. My, my ringtone. I hear it. Oh. Peep. <laughs> He's like, turn that shit off. Like, nah, bro. Oh my God. I'll tell you what, as an old school One Piece fan, I have such fond memories of Long Red, Long Island. Though. So do I. So such fond memories, son. Come on. I was speaking earlier about. I was speaking about it earlier. I'm like, it's actually kind of funny to me. I'll, I'll just go on this tangent as fast as humanly possible. For the people who really, really care about power scaling, I'm like, this is one of the most important arcs that actually kind of highlight how com- how One Piece combat works. It's not crazy nuanced, but it's more nuanced than some people will give it credit for. Luffy yep. beats two back to back. Logia users, blah blah blah. Enderu and a crocodile. Why are you struggling with Fox Team? I'll tell you why. First of all, you're fighting on his. You're fighting on his terms. He's sneaky, yeah. he's conniving, and he's cheating. And you're fighting on his ship, his environment. Luffy mm-hmm. is kind of dumb. You're using that against him. Like, a, and mm-hmm. nor, 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 nor me is not a bad ability. It's a combination Bro. of all those things that gave him trouble. Is Luffy really weaker than this guy? Of course not. But the fact that he had all those things going for him, it gave Luffy trouble. So, it's, and, I, and, and then people argue there's no stakes. And I'm like, ha, ah, common mistake you guys make sometimes. You think that if... So whatever is happening right now doesn't have major ramifications in the One Piece universe. It doesn't matter. What does Nakama mean to Luffy and everyone else there? It's very important. It's a central theme here, the friendship theme, Nakama. So if Luffy loses one of his crew members, whether it's through death, a game, whatever, he's livid. He's pissed. So it still matters. The stakes are still high. You may not care about Chopper, nigga. I know you don't care about Chopper. That's why you're probably quiet. You don't give a fuck. Chopper, well, we don't. Why yeah. <laughs> you don't care about Chopper? But, but. Luffy cares. You see what I'm saying? To be fair, Chopper wasn't actually bad. He wasn't bad in Long Run Long Island. Mm-hmm. Who are you? I mean, listen, people think I do hate Chopper. I do. But there's okay. moments where I can stomach <laughs> Chopper. I, I could stomach Chopper in Ennis Lobby and Drum Island in Long Run Long Island. That's about it. <laughs> hey, I had to make sure I was shout to, shout to the best second. doctor in the series. Hey, yo, QB Rush, though? <laughs> I fucking love that shit. The referee looked away. I didn't see that. What happened? I mean, bro, stop cheating. I was, doing, shit was so gas, bro. This nigga is hideous, son. <laughs> oh, shit. Luffy hates being alone the more than hurt, so the loss would be heavy. That's, that, there's that, too. When you think, think about what happened with Ace and Sabo. That's a good point. That's a good point, right? I didn't think about that. That's a good point. Yeah. But, um, Mario. Oh, I read that already. But, yeah, um, 
it just yeah, it, it's, it's funny because like that arc is actually very significant for the very reason a lot of people claim they don't like One Piece. Oh, I don't care about the combat. I mean, for the adventure and the truck and all yeah, and all you guys maybe talk about is fights. Hey, Joe. Anyways, um, <laughs> how did you feel about broke? Oh, that's the question I wanted to ask. How did you feel about broke initially? The reason why I asked this is because. I never disliked the character Brook, but when Brook was first int when, fr when Brook like joined the crew, I wasn't with it. I didn't want him on the crew at all. He grew on me. But original, my thought process like we have Zoro, so we don't need your swordsmanship, nigga. Shit, weak, a, cane, a weak ass cane. Take that out of here. And in hindsight, it's Kane, <laughs> Kane Raw. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Kane Raw. But uh, I was like, I was like, I had to be like what 15? Like I was a different nigga back then. <laughs> um. And then I'm like, he ha he he can't die. That's cool, but he kind of can't swim for no reason. Now he can yeah. manipulate his soul, so he can use his power. But at the time, he couldn't do that. And in my head, I'm like, okay, you're the musician. You know, Luffy. Like like Pat said, we know Luffy. <laughs> Why don't we just hit from time G? But I'm like, we have Frankie. He had he had his little ukulele. You know what I'm saying? He a robot. He can get some 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 synths inside him. Some beats. You know, just play some. get that nigga some tea instead of cola. He gonna play the right tunes. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> nigga could turn himself into a fucking DJ booth. Like, bro, do I need bro? But, but, he, but he grew on me. But how do you feel about Brooke initially? Um, he was all right. I guess he was kind of funny. Um. I like this laugh. I, I, I think Brooke's introduction was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, the introduction yeah, yeah. of Brooke was hilarious. You know, bro, son, you know what? You know what I got to talk about, nigga? <laughs> when, he, when he saw Nami, nigga, the fucking game the nigga put on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Spit shine the shoes a little bit, fix the both tires, and this nigga out of line. <laughs> he said, beautiful. <laughs> and nigga, that shit be screaming. <laughs> He said, it's "Yo, the game. he said, yo, he said, yo, let me see the, let me, let me see the patty, little nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it's the game. He really try to put game on. Like Brooke ain't seen a joint in fifty years. He's like, ah, right, it's my time, nigga. I said, Brooke, like, shit, hold on, my hair looking good. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, <laughs> bow tie on fleek, eyes right, shoes shining. All right, let's move. <laughs> oh shit. No, I feel that. I felt that. Not that. That really was like, like he was in jail and he just came. I was like, oh shit. Hold on." <laughs> She, she kind of bad. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo. He said, let me move in. Let me move in. Yeah. He's like, so, do you poop? <laughs> that shit, man. I don't know. That shit, was, that shit was funny. It really was. Yeah. So he was he was cool. Brooke, Brooke was cool. I think. Undead Mac. He, he, not like that. <laughs> he was never. Brooke was never anything more than cool to me. Uh -huh. Um, But the backstory hit hard. Yeah. I'll say that. The backstory hit hard. And I think. Um, I want to say the best, but one of the best moments is when he stopped playing and he said, I'm so glad I'm alive. I was like, yeah, that, that one yes, hit. Sir. That moment hit for me. I was like, let's hit it because yeah. I understand. He, it's like hearing that you've been wishing you were dead for 50 years only to realize that you're happy to be alive. I'm just like, yeah, it was good. Like yeah. that's, that's like the essence of One Piece is getting you with the right moments at the right time. So it was good. Yeah. I would say that I appreciate that kind of that, when that stuff happens because I like when characters who can kind of can't die or immortal or whatever the case is pseudo immortals. What's always interesting with them is their relationship with life. Yes, and that's why, and that's why that moment hits a lot for me. Um, Pat said this earlier. And I think I agree with it. The more I think about it, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm fully there yet. I have to think about it off screen, off screen, stream. I'm off screen already. But um, <laughs> do you think that this is one of the better? conclusions to an arc i'm not necessarily saying the climax in terms of the battle of what happened but just how the literal arc concludes with the, the, the laboon but like to the put the kuma stuff leading into the laboon and brooke and, and brooke backstory like how do you feel about the conclusion of this arc how it wraps up i think it was very strong honestly i think the ending was strong i think ending with kuma nothing happened yep um brooke joining the crew the backstory the callback to laboon i think it was a strong finish you know, banquets with One Piece always do hit, yeah. but I think having the emotional moment within the banquet is rare that we get because everyone's normally happy. Um, I think the only thing I can relate it to is Robin seeing Aokiji in the middle of the banquet at the end of Venice Lobby. Okay. That was also a very good moment. It reminded me of that moment as well. Like, okay, it looks like you finally found a place where you belong. That hit to me. So I, I think Thriller Brock ended on a high, in my opinion. <clears throat> Oh, also one thing I forgot to say earlier when I was talking about how great the ending was with uh, Sanji and Zoro and how their relationship is one of the best. 
when those two um, members of Lola's crew, they saw what had happened and they was going to tell the rest of the crew like what went down. Mm-hmm. And Sanji pulled them up to the side and he was like, hey man, don't tell them niggas what Zoro did. Yeah. He did that shit of his own accord. He a man. So they were like, hey, well, yeah, he was like, why don't you want them to tell? You was looking cool too. He was like, hey, it's a code of a man. But that's, like, that's what I'm saying. People don't know. Like, people swear. I'm like, yo, Zoro stands me shitting on Sanji. I'm like, Sanji be riding for Zoro. You a bitch ass nigga if you slandering Sanji, bro. Like, y'all don't understand. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sanji be know, riding man. for Zoro, bro. Zoro and Sanji ride for each other. They do it all the time, but they never notice that shit. That I just don't sweat. understand what they're reading. Because I'm like, they don't <laughs> hate each other. What is wrong with you guys? Like, they you don't. Guys, they misinterpret the relationship all the time. It's all a rivalry. Time. Yes, but there's nothing but respect there. Nothing but respect. Like Zoro respects the shit out of Sanji. Like it's serious. Like he legitimately respects him. Like I don't know how, how much more they need to see, bro. Like that moment in Thriller Bark is a good indication of that too. You know? Where it's like Zoro does what he does because it's like, nah man, he needs you. You know? And he puts him mm-hmm. in and after he's like, I'll take my head instead because yo, if you don't take my head, I'm just gonna tell you about me. I'm about to become the world best swordsman, nigga. I'm saying, <laughs> like, you know, he said, he said, he said, he said <laughs> if I'm going out, I'm going out beating my chest. I said, I respect he said, it. He said, hitting the pink on you, know what I'm saying, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't think anyone that thinks they hate each other have ever had close friends. It's just that too, because like I remember, I remember how this started because this would, you know, let's get into this. Let's, why not? We here. I have a problem when people try to take two situations that have a very similar surface level similarity and overlap and then try to say it's the same thing. This yeah. is how I feel about the KD LeBron the KD and LeBron stuff. With KD okay. going to the Golden State Warriors is not the same thing as LeBron going to Miami. It's never not been the same no way, thing. on the very no way, surface. No yes, but when you dive into the minutia, you go under the sea a little bit, there's a little a little bit of depth, you find why it's so vastly different. So when people try to conflate the Usopp moment when he quit, disrespect to the captain, did what he did, when Luffy accepted resignation to what happened with Sanji, I and they're like, oh, when Zoro sees him, he gonna make him apologize. He gonna yo, kill him. Yo. What story are you reading? That shit was so fucking. That's stupid. five piece. P E A C E. What the fuck are you reading? <laughs> hey, and what happened? Wano, Zoro and Sanji met up. They never even spoke Ain't about nothing it. Nothing happened. Hey, hey, what what else niggas told me? They said when Zoro find out that Big Mom and Wano, he gonna get mad at Luffy. He didn't say a word about it. Why? Because Zoro not the type of nigga to make excuses for his misfortunes. These niggas don't even understand the niggas that they be fucking trying to stand and worship as God. Talk to them nigga. Yep. And Zoro get long blindsided, long he gonna be like, what? Long. Damn, I let my guard down. Yep. That's all he gonna say. What do you say, Alan? Niggas come make a million excuses. Uh, I said that nigga Zoro told them a long time ago. We're not playing pirates no more. Yeah. We're, 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 just, we're just not playing pirates, bro. So like all that, all that bullshit about oh he's gonna be mad for this and that. Like nigga, none of that shit matters because at the end of the day, they're gonna have to fight with these, uh, the emperors anyway. And there it is. Yeah, they make me they make me laugh sometimes because I just genuinely wonder if like are you just like not reading? <laughs> Like, are you just not reading the story? Like, I don't know. I don't know how people misconstrue their relationship that badly. Like, to the point where, like, I even remember, is it the third movie, the Chopper one? Where, they, where they're fighting the swordsman and the guy with the kicks? And he's like, listen, man. I deal with somebody who kicks her waist. I mean, like, you think you a nice swordsman, man? It's like, no, like, they respect each other. That's non-canon, but, I, but, but still, like, the people who made that movie and whatnot understood the relationship. Yeah, it's, so, it's online with what they would say in a regular series. Exactly, exactly. And they work together very well. Do you remember when they, hey, when they, the they were re- in the day back? Like, all right, enough of this. Yeah, you said, "Cook, let me in half yeah. for like five seconds." You're like, five seconds? All right, that's enough time." <laughs> like, like, bro, they, I don't know, man. I just, I get, I get it, because like they're rivals, but they're still, they're still brothers, man. And and, and any time an external force is coming against Luffy and them. They will ride together. This is why 
one of the things that I kind of hope, I don't, if it didn't happen, I'm not going to lose, I'm not going to be upset, but I kind of hope with this battle with Sanji and Queen and King and, and Zoro is that they stay in close proximity and they continue to do still little things to help each other to try to like, ah, oh, you see, I helped you twice. You were paying attention. And after you come, like, you know, I, I hope they do that a bit more, a bit more. The bridal claw and stuff. That was cool. I like that. So yeah, they truly are the way to the PK. That's a fact. They're less than a lot of Facts. Which two members of the Straw Hats have the funniest banter in my in our in all opinions? That's a good question. Zoro and Sanji. Zoro and Sanji be having me fucking dead. Son, these niggas take the smallest shit. I don't know. Who's up and Luffy be having me cracking up? Hold on. Son. This is a, I'm not saying you're wrong, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, oh, see, you're you're not wrong, but for <laughs> me, not. long long win Long Island, son. <laughs> the boxing these niggas were doing <laughs> over this small little nigga. Full on boxing, Sanji and Zoro, though. I could not believe what I was seeing, bro. I could bro, not believe that. Talk about stuff. I'm the ball man. I look <laughs> handsome. He like, yeah, you look handsome, all right? The handsome ball man of idiots. <laughs> Next thing you know, they scrapping. Like, full on. My man doing out here party table kick course with this nigga. <laughs> Zoro not using no swords. I'm like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, nah, shit, nah. I, I love it. I love it. Right, right, right. Yo, that shit had me wrong. Yo, actually, and also, you know what technically counts? It counts. I guess it can count for uh, for Usopp and and uh, and uh, Sanji as well. When Zoro left Sabaody. Mm-hmm. He was gonna go on the walk, and Sanji oh, and Usopp, <laughs> Usopp was like, "Yo, where you get me?" He's like, you he's will get lost. Zoro time. Zoro kun. Where are you do- going on your own? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga said, don't believe in yourself. I swear the red niggas had me screaming. They was cooking that nigga Zoro. No, no don't believe in yourself. Not, not the part. That's, that, that shit that took part. me out, that my part. nigga. I could not breathe, son. I said, don't believe in yourself. God damn. <laughs> oh, this shit that had me dead. Zoro like, nigga. It's fucking numbers on the trees. Who the fuck gonna get lost out here? They like, oh, oh, you thought this through? So <laughs> <laughs> wow, you thought this through? That's wild. They're, they're, they're like, like, oh, he's not brain dead. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, oh no, nah, bro, that shit. Oh, that shit is funny. Now y'all, so. y'all might be right. I'm just saying. I, I, I definitely Luffy and, I, and I, yeah, Usopp I respect that choice though. Up. But Usopp is just a funny nigga. Usopp is funny as hell, bro. Luffy, not, Luffy, Luffy too, but still, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's the thing I like the most about Usopp. You pair him with any straw hat, he's gonna be hilarious. Mm-hmm. But I always, I always loved. Um, like it's not funny, but I'll, for some reason, I've always loved how Sanji can ch- calm down Chopper. I don't know what it is. I always loved it, and even Usopp, some to a degree. But you remember, I remember when we was freaking out about Robin. He said, "You know, you forget a woman's tears. Wring the shirt out, walk out the water." That was dope. And recently, was like, "Oh, he was he's been beaten. What are we gonna do?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. He's like, "Yo, man, yo, calm your ass down, nigga." <laughs> <You'll be laughs> all right. Telling Usopp, what can you do here? Like, what can you do that I can't do? You know, like he, I, I like the calming presence that he could have with some of the other characters. So, but um, but yeah. Anything? I'm trying to think of anything. Oh, how do you, oh, how do you feel with the how do you, how do you like the Usopp versus Perona fight? Because we kind of we kind of started there a little bit. How do you like? Ah, uh, I liked it. Actually, I liked it. Cause Sin, think... cause Sin was talking about how he thinks it's a really good moment for Usopp because it's like. His his relationship with himself and like he basically said that in a lot of ways basically said that we're an insert for Usopp. Usopp is like the most regular human on the ship. I always say him and Ami are kind of like the most regular people on the ship, and that um him like putting the mask on to try to like summon a certain level of courageousness by kind of adopting the Soki King moniker and stuff was like a really good moment. So we really really liked that stuff. So just just to Chris to kind of frame it. Go ahead. Um, I saw it differently. Good. I saw I saw Usab as it's the finally the the moment where he can really be himself. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I can be somebody by being who I am. Bet you in trouble. Like this <laughs> thing is like Usab. Like you saw you saw. Think about. I think the best way to put it is imagine that you're in Dragon Ball Z, and you're a Saiyan and you getting folded because this person is really strong against Saiyans. 
Uh, this person is extremely weak against humans. Mm -hmm. So Krillin pull up and said, it's my time to shine. I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah. And Krillin just <laughs> whooped that nigga's ass. That's how I saw Usopp with Bruna. Oh, bet. You only good against niggas that are scared? Say less. I'm scared all the time. What's good? Like, I'm what, always negative. What's, what's good, nigga? Like that to me it was like it was like Usopp's it was like the perfect situation for Usopp to be himself and win like the way he is. Because if you look at Arlon Park mm -hmm. and you look at most of Usopp's fight, it's normally him being really scared and then him overcoming his scaredness to be brave in the moment he needs to be. Mm -hmm. In this case, he didn't need to be brave at all. He said, yes, sir. It's just me, nigga. I'm just scared all the time. Fuck you. So it's just Bro, like... We didn't even talk about, like, Perona face when she found out her <laughs> ghost not going to work on um, Bro, she just could not believe what was happening, so... <laughs> And the way he beat her, I'm like the hammer, the ten ton hammer. It looked like an actual said, ten ton Ooh, hammer. Stop, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I fucking love that nigga so much, bro. He's so funny. Usopp, funny as hell, bro. Usopp. Ah, yeah. Why are you Tarzan? <laughs> <laughs> this is Skype Why are you Tarzan? It's so funny, bro. Uh, when this nigga said I'm always negative, and Barona was like, Come, buddy! <laughs> fight, fight! You can do it! He's like, stop trying to cheer me up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I said that that moment's significant because no one else, Perona was a, a huge threat on Thriller Bark. No one else would have been able to beat her. We do have the hindsight now that with Conqueror's hockey or hockey to a certain level, certain things like that won't work. Because we were talking about like uh, a little bit like you also thought maybe Sugar and Perona could fight anybody. But with Law's statement, how, how he's unable to move them because their hockey is too strong. Um, if it happened now, it'd be different. But at the moment, Usopp was the only person who could be here. Because yeah. Pat bring, bring, brings up the moment where Zoro's like, huh, this only worked because you guys are always carefree. <laughs> you get hit by the ghost? He's like, I wish I was never born. <laughs> I said, yo, no one is exempt. She's a fucking problem. These ghosts are not safe. They're, they're, ghosts are a problem, nigga. Do not fight her. So, shout out to Usopp, man. But I just said this, Jay. Um... This is just this is just another instance to me where I I like Usopp's courageousness because I say like like Luffy is fearless and fearlessness to me isn't the same thing as being brave. It's like it's exactly. literally the absence of fear. Yeah. So it's uh, his, yeah. he stands his ground the most and plants his feet in the ground when he needs to the most. So I like I like that shit. So yeah. The reason I respect Usopp a lot, um, is because this is something I had to learn, and I, I'll try to keep this as vague as possible. But I'll, I'll put it in in the context of you know I'll put it in a I'll, I'll give a good real life example. Mm -hmm. um, say you're a dude that's really shy, and you want to talk to a girl. There's guys. Are, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's guys that are really confident and just shoot. They shot. Like, they shoot like J.R. Smith. They just pull off from anywhere. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. Niggas just pull yeah. off. The Even guy who's fake and think about it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but like, it takes a lot for a guy who is genuinely really shy and unconfident mm -hmm. to go out of his way to walk up to a girl and just say, "Hey, I think you're pretty. Can I have a date?" Niggas won't really look at that and think, oh, yeah, it, he might get rejected. Niggas look at that like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, he ain't got no game. To me, when I see that, I'm like, you know, that took a lot of guts. Yeah. That took a lot of courage to do something like that. And he's going to get better from it. That's how I see with Usopp. Mm -hmm. You know it took a lot for him to stand up in that situation, and he did it anyway. It's just like you have to – There's with Usopp, you got to see a little deeper to understand who he is. Yes. You got to look beyond the surface. You can call him a coward, call him a bitch, whatever. When he stands up, when he in the moments he stands up in, it takes so much courage to do that. You just understand, wow, this guy is really doing it. That's why he's brave. And, and it's not even that. When you when you holler at a girl, you're going to live. So you can survive that. This is life or death stuff this nigga's standing up to. <laughs> he said he's going to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. If a girl says, no, fuck you, you ugly, all right, you get hurt for a little bit, cry for two weeks, nigga, you get over it. Two Who's weeks? Up? All right, come on. <laughs> Bro, it, not the if first you shot, time. Not the first I can't time. think about it. I'm about to say, if you shot and a girl, tells, if a girl says you ugly, nigga, yeah. The first time I got rejected, 
my 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 world was distorted. I said, "Am I ugly?" <laughs> it be hey, it be hurting, cause yeah, but, hurt. but for me, it was a little different because I'm used to getting yes. So I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, what's going on here?" So I'm gonna oh, yes. but yeah. So anyway, so, yeah, so, really so good, good point about, though. I, I, I yeah, to say. 100%. That's it. That's really it, man. Yeah, that's yeah. It's just oh, the yeah. courage is awesome. I respect Usopp's courage so much. Yeah. Yeah, girl. Uh, cool. And um, when awesome. Yasop tells Usopp he's proud of him, will be one of the best moments in One Piece. Oh, that'll be. Oh, he said, "Wow, my Ooh. son's a brave man in the sea." Oh yeah, I'll snipe that nigga. Hold on, yes sir. The streets crying. The streets crying for that one. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. But yeah, but that's that, but that's my um one of the reasons why I've always liked Usopp so much because it's just like he embodies like Zapelli's. Zapelli and I have the same idea of what it means to be courageous. Um, thank you for the follow. Um, to be courageous, where it's like. It's actually if you are fearful and overcome that, it might, like I said, it might look ugly. His nose is running, his legs are shaking, might piss himself, but he stands his ground and matters the most. And I respect that every time. You know, it's still raw to see Luffy just jump in head first and do it, but he's fearless. It's a little different. So, it is what it is. But, um, is there anything else, anything else in, in particular I think I need to ask you? I'm trying to think. Because we, we went through a lot of stuff. Any, if anyone has any, any questions in the chat, you can ask it now. If forever hold your peace, we, we can wrap this up. Um, Actually, I want to talk about the last chapter for a little bit while I'm here. Kind of got a chance to talk about it on stream. But I don't remember what happened. Oh, the twin dragons. There we go. Yes. Oh, my God. I still have to say that. I'll say this again. Roger's thumbnail was... I'm so mad I didn't think of that before him. I love double dragons. Like, I love that game. And he had the Twin Dragons from, from Momo and Kaido. I'm like, ah! I'm gonna look at it now. Ah! That was, a, that was an elite thumbnail. So shout out to Rogers Wish for that. But, um... Ah, uh, I see it, yeah. No, I, 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 I love that chapter because... Uh, well, first of all, we're getting a dragon battle. This shit roll. Momo big as shit now. This shit is cool. But uh, everyone knows that Luffy's alive, so a lot of the morale and stuff, they're, they're going to be reinvigorated. But the thing that I liked about it a lot was just that um, Momo is still very much a kid. Similar to a kid. Because I was saying, one of the reasons that I think that this, this moment, I think Oda wants to do this and make him like 28, is so he can kind of reverse the gag. Where Momo's like an 8 year old or whatever. But he see them thang thang and he like, yes, sir, I'm trying to get to the bath with the bitches, you know, feel me? And after now, it's going to be like, you're a grown-ass man. Stop acting like a fucking kid. And like, it's exactly what's happening already. It's like, Luffy's like, nigga, open your fucking eyes. What the hell are you doing? So I was like, I'm here for that, so. Um, First call, that nigga saw some pervy shit and Robin and Nami slapped that nigga inside his head. Can I be honest with you? I don't give a shit about Momo being a dragon. I'm not going to lie. Well, I mean, I don't care about him being a dragon. I care about Luffy's on him. That's the thing. Go ahead. But that's the thing. It didn't do nothing for me. Oh, you were hype. Okay, fair that's enough. A, I was not hype. I was like, you oh, was kind of cool. Because didn't move him. I was unmoved, nigga. Cause just because, to me, Momo being a kid is something I enjoyed the, the, um, the courage that he had to show as being a kid. Like, the shit with Conjuro, bro. Mm -hmm. Trying to escape and that con that nigga Contro folded him up like mm -hmm. that was evil. That shit was terrible. And then he still had the balls to announce that he was the son of Odin on that on the cross. I'm like, yo, Momo's really like really showing me who he is. Mm -hmm. Now he turns he gets older, he turns into a dragon. I'm just like, damn, I don't really care no more, dog. Like it's kind of he, he's still a kid, but you're a big ass dragon now. I don't I don't really care too much. I think it's the perception. You know, when you see him small and vulnerable, you kind of like. No, I didn't respect. want him to get bigger. So I, so I actually agree. I think, with you. I didn't yeah, it's like you respect his, you respect him, you respect his courage more when he's like a kid. Mm -hmm. Now he's a big ass dragon. It's like, nah. He could at I'm least like, look nah. the part now, if anything. Yeah, I'm he should look the part. So him being nervous and he's a big ass dragon, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. This is stupid. Like, it, it, just that comes out of here. I'm like, man, if I'm a big ass dragon, I'm breathing fire everywhere. If I'm eight nigga, I'm breathing fire. Just <laughs> fucking go wild. So I'm like, now it's like it's not hitting for me no more. So the Yamato stuff, raw, fine. But Momo, the dragon, Luffy appearing on the dragon, niggas comparing that to Naruto, um, appearing in the pain arc. I'm like, One Piece fans are Wait, what? perfect. Yes, <laughs> I have. I have to call out One Piece fans. I have to do it. Bro, no, just, I'm sorry. I got all of them. 
Because I'm fucking tired. Know how to appreciate what we're getting yeah, without comparing I, it to something else. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Naruto fans are so hold on, hold on, sorry, sorry, real quick, Jay. What would you rate this arc? Sorry, this up before I forget. I'm through the bar. Oh, uh, throw the bar. Yes. Um. Sin gave it an eight, right? Eight, so. Seven, seven out of ten. I feel is a fair. Okay. Comparison: seven out of ten, seven point five for the comedy. So I guess seven point five. Okay, so me, you're the, me you're at the same score then. Seven point five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pat? It's not gas by any means, but it's just a solid arc. I think it's a solid. It, it does what it needs to do. Mm-hmm. Pat. Hey, you know me. Comedy is paramount. Hell's memories. So just off, off the comedy alone, it's an eight and a half. Okay. Fair enough. Alan? Uh, I'll give it an eight. Okay. Sorry, now continue, continue, go ahead. Now. I'm gonna make that I feel like eight's a little high, but then again, it's it is people's opinion. I was so I was gonna fair. be I was gonna be the guy and go like seven seven point eight, but like I won't do that today. <laughs> now, so, <laughs> so here's my problem, and here's been my problem with One Piece fans for a while. Y'all suck the dick of this series so fucking hard that you think everything Oda does is fucking gold. Everything Oda does is not fucking gold. Please read other manga. Read mediums. Please. Momo and Luffy on a fucking dragon has nowhere near, nowhere near the relevancy that Naruto appearing in that paint arc has. Nowhere near. 2,000 niggas like that post. I said, there's 2,000. 2,000. Hey, I don't man. care if I get cancer. Hey, hey, Mentally hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No. No, no, it's, no, no. It's just raw. It's no, not a, but here's not the thing. Raw? There's a difference between raw and emotional weight. There's no emotional weight behind that moment when Momo being on Luffy's back. Just no, I agree. Just, zero. I, 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 just are you talking about the just post real quick? That was so it based on our scores, filler bark, the saga gets a seven point nine. Okay, so that would be the final score. <laughs> He said um, the saga. Right. Saga. Well, remember, remember, just ranking the saga. But remember, Thriller Bark has one arc for the saga. <laughs> so the saga gets. You're a fraud. Right. You're a fraud. Nigga. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is the part of the stream. <laughs> just say the all. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> this is the, the you're saga funny. and the arc. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm done now. All right, we good. Nah, but seriously, I'm just. This is the one, this is the biggest grab I have with One Piece fans, man. They just take. I don't even. I don't. I wouldn't even begin to compare those things. So like the the com- the comparison is cooked from the start. I'm not moved by this. Are oh, you talking about the comparison? Saying. Yeah, yeah. The comparison, and it's like it's, it's no like way you can say that. I mean, look, everybody know me. I don't got nothing nice to say about Naruto no more. Yeah, because it sucks. Come on now. When 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 Naruto showed up to fight Pain on Gamma Bunta, come on, man. Come on. That's wrong. I was unmoved until you were saying on that one body. Then I was moved. That was, that was, that was, that was I, can, I I always say this. It's the only that's the only time I ever liked Naruto kind of. I never liked that nigga from the jump. But I'm like, okay, yeah. you kinda cool today. So it's like I mean You ain't kinda cool today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll just say it like this. My problem with One Piece fans is they like to overhype everything. Hype the moments that deserve to be hyped, but don't act like everything that you read in One Piece is big fiction. Please. Because it's not. And we know it's not. Wait, you going Scar- to tell me the Scabbers are good characters? Yeah, I ain't, nigga. They not? Asha no. Doji is? She. <laughs> I swear Doji is good, but that's about it. Nobody. Hey, Ka- Kawamatsu not a good character. No, Kawamatsu, is he Ooh, a character, wrong. nigga? What? What's Ka- what's Ka- Ka- what are we doing, Jay? What's his personality? What's his personality? He was Super protecting Kiori for all those years. <laughs> that's a personality? Right that's a personality? Yeah. Hey, fish nigga, sumo. He's no, wrong. you're wrong. You know you're wrong. You know it. You know you're wrong. You know it. Kawamatsu, Kawamatsu I liked, has... I liked, I liked Kiku until she was a fucking idiot, so... There you so go. Now I hate her. Hey man, that shit, that shit did not that shit did not sit right with me. I no, I said no. Actually, I was like, like you know know what? No, good for you. Die. That's what you get. The no, bro, like I just I just went back and reread the beginning of the raid, and then uh, Kiku Kiku was telling Kiyomona that if he wasn't ready to uh, to strike down the traitor, then none of them would, then none of them would be ready to. I'm like now looking at that shit going back. I'm like, bitch. Man, how fucking dare you even? How dare you even fix your lips to say that shit? And then when it's your turn to fucking kill the traitor, you can't do this. Shit. Hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. That's the dumb comparison. That's for fact. Zodiac, nothing happened. Kerry, Thriller Bark, Cap, Jay, that Berserk fans, dude. Uh, wait, Jake, 
Berserk fans do that too. What's the difference? Sound like a true fraud. Oh, uh, uh, Berserk is actually gas, but that's up to you, King. You do what you got to do. Hey, hold on. What's with the actually? What's going on? <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> I like getting on Jay's nerves. I know how. I I, 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 listen, no berserk, it exists. You know, it's cool. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't mind. You know, know what I'm saying? Everybody got right to their opinion. First, like two times prior to that, <laughs> Naruto pulled up repping his set. Best entrance is ramen guy filler episode. Shikamaru the goat dressed in pent up anger during the speech treated himself. I know it's just funny. Oh, okay. Um, no, like the, the rage that Jay, not rage, but the, 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 whatever you have towards the community is something that I feel. I just feel in a different way. <laughs> the way I feel is different. The but community like, pisses me off all because the time. So. The, 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 the good and bad thing about the fact that no one cares about anything that I have to say about, have to say about One Piece is that I could just step away and no one checks for me. So I don't, I don't have to see this shit. <laughs> I, don't have to, I don't have to engage. Like, like with you, like you're kind of in the thick of it. So, and plus you're a Sanji, a huge Sanji fan, so I know they'll Sanji do anything. Into the thick and of it. And the, yeah, and they'll overanalyze the any and everything that he does. Shut up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm kind of disconnected from the community. So you just say that the Naruto thing happened to me. I was like, bro, why did that even happen? Like what? Like, like I see it all the time. It's I choose to ignore. Uh, Jay has. He does not, not have that privilege at all. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. It's like me, it's like, 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 with me, I can't, I can't, I can't divorce myself from Tower God fans. I have to be in there. <laughs> I have to know what's going you on. You have a choice. I'm stuck, bro. So, I, I got no so, uh, so when, <clears throat> so when Bam is doing nonsense, and I have to, and I'm just, I'm just, my head hurts, and there's like, these are the regular. Like, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, whatever, man. You guys got it. I'm not, reading. I'm not, I'm not reading. Right? It's me. I'm crazy. I get it. You love. <laughs> I'd be mad, y'all. Yo, talk off at me. <laughs> They'd be saying stuff, and I'm like, you, you like this, this? This is your argument? Does it make any sense? There's no logic here. I'm so, anyways. But yeah, that's a weird comparison. But um, the Yamato Kaido stuff was was cool. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I don't dislike Yamato, but I'm not moved. The Odin gimmick has to be dropped after okay. the end of this arc okay. for me to fully accept her. Okay, fair. Which I think it will. Alright. And, and I really want to see um, Kid and Laws fight with Big Mom. Like I'm equally as invested in that. <laughs> like, I want to see a goat. Also, <clears throat> the goat Hawkins, you know what I'm saying? He got a killer on a shirt right now. You know what I'm talking about? The magician, <laughs> he's just out here doing his thing. You know what I'm talking about? Wada wada no me, not a big deal. Best world, best uh, supernova. You know what I'm talking about? Yer. <laughs> I guess if my one friend gets so bad, I'm talking about Hawkins, like, don't even start. <laughs> he just, he just goes, don't even, he just goes, don't even start. Don't start, don't start. <laughs> don't start. Anytime I say crocodile or Hawkins, he just says, please don't start. <laughs> <laughs> and you know if it's crocodile too, man. My cape on. My cape on, full of sand. That joint flowing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Pat. Um, thoughts on the chapter though, for real? How do you like generally speaking? Oh, my thoughts on the chapter. Yeah. I mean, it was it was good. You know, I enjoyed it. Uh, what you call it? Yamato backstory was cool. I couldn't put the name to the face when I was reading the chapter, but like afterwards, I was like, "Duh, that's Ushi uh, Maru." So, you know, him guess. being a uh, that was my guess, but, then, but there's one more chapter after that, isn't that? Or is that the last chapter? Actually, that ain't the last chapter. No, the last chapter isn't the, isn't the Yamato backstory. The last chapter is when it's pretty much Luffy riding Momo <laughs> through the entire uh, of Wano uh, until you get to the, to the yeah, room. Oh, that's the chapter. Yeah, when we on break. <laughs> My mind be like separated from it until we come back. 